a special intro. Usually we jump right into last week's um, recap. However, we're going to do a recap from the beginning of the adventure, just that everyone can be caught up. Would anybody volunteer to do this? <laughs> right here, right here. <laughs> the, 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 DM, the DM can do it. We are, uh, we are minus one uh, player at the moment who's still uh, on their way in from work, but we're going to do this extended recap while they're getting here. So, um, the backstory. Our adventurers uh, knew and met each other at um, their shared uh, favorite haunt, um, known as the Tipsy Turtle, um, on the northern or on the southern coast of the Shining Sea. Uh, they had a let's call it a dude where's my car situation, um, where they woke up after a night of drunken debauchery um, and uh, discovered an artifact which slipped through their hands. Also met a dragon. Um, who does anybody remember what your deal with the dragon was? Uh, we had to get a special thing for him, a MacGuffin. The, the codex? The codex. Inspiration for Helen. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know what that is. Or at least we didn't at the time. I we just knew we had I always have inspiration. <laughs> um, yep. bad. And uh, <laughs> why... What, does anybody remember like what awoke you from your drunken stupor that morning? Yeah, but I, I don't want to be called a teacher's on the door. Now. <laughs> a, guy, a guy nailing an eviction notice. Why are we being evicted, Don Sorgo? Um, because they wanted to dig a canal right through. That's true. So they were, digging, they were digging a canal from the River Ching uh, up to the uh, the east of Alto, right through the Tipsy Turtle. Um, a canal to connect uh, the Shining Sea to the South Chaltian Sea. Um, and they basically said, we're going to demolish the Tipsy Turtle to, um, the, the, what is this called? Eminent Domain. We're eminent domaining this, the, the Tipsy Turtle. We're going to demolish it to build this canal. So I like how all of my campaigns start with this kind of <laughs> BS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, and then in the next session, um, you all uh, set out for uh, Alto to meet the city council to kind of um, state your case. Uh, you met um, Xenophon best paladin ever xenophon he has the mug it says best paladin ever on it nothing ever not great happened with xenophon ever um you uh he's the captain of the hasarian seraphim um you helped him fight some definitely not zerg who came out of the desert to save some folks and he uh, escorted or began to escort you all the way to alto on your way you discovered a huge canal being dug was there anything weird about that canal I mean, the canal itself or the workers were pretty weird. Yeah, yeah, tell us about that. Mm -hmm. um, they were all in lockstep and all undead. <laughs> <laughs> all magically undead. And unlike in Blazing Saddles, they sang no songs. No songs, yep. It's just uh, the very rhythmic clink, clink of um, shovels and pickaxes and mauls and hammers. Um, all right. And uh, then you arrived in Alto. Uh, there were some criers yelling some plot hooks at you. Um, you discovered some things about Alto. What did you discover upon arriving at Alto? That it's a great city where everything is great and the people are fine. Right? Uh, there's a plague. <laughs> there's a plague. A light plague. A very did you find that out immediately? I can't remember. Just some body rot and... Uh, <laughs> You know, we ran across it pretty quick while going walkabout. I felt like, did we? Did, was that before or after we went to the? We just went, we just went right to City Hall to to see the man in charge, basically first thing, right? Important um, people that we are. Yeah, we you did. Person. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, after that, after the essential. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frask like got in a well and stole a bunch of water, and the guards, the, <laughs> the racist anti lizard guards, are like, "Nah, man, it's not our vibe." Um, but yes, and then you had a, a scene at the Bone Gate where some plague folk were attempting to uh, escape when the door opened so that the guards should push, were going to push some food through. And they made a, made a mad break for it. Can anybody describe this scene or remember this scene for me? <laughs> oh, it's too bad Chase here is not here to remember this for us. <laughs> Defend himself. Yeah. So, yeah, like, they're basically, they're like, there was like a, a guy riling up the crowd. And, you know, like, 
urging them to go charge and then when you know the guards are like oh hell no then they you know voltron into a bunch of like uh flesh golems plague, plague nano swarms into a giant flesh golem that's right um, it was like big so, hero sticks but with zombie bits yeah so um the archers posted on rooftops to watch over this uh, plague ward um just started murdering these civilians as they made a break for it um but as they died um their uh the, the plague parts of them turned into that plague that um thanos plague dust and uh all kind of congregated on one of these large plague victims and turned him into some hulking monstrosity uh who killed that hulking monstrosity uh Arch Gosh, believe, the giant snake. I believe it died out of sheer terror Zenfon. of a musket lawn brand wall. Wow. Yeah. Zenifon. Zenifon and his Zenobros came in to sit yeah. Seraphim yeah. and uh, murdered it. Also, the bow guys were shooting it. There were lots of archers as well. Yep. Um, when they didn't, you, weren't shooting Blaine. You also uh, gained a party member. That's one way to put yep. it. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> uh, some broken toy. <laughs> so you found a a broken warforged named Primus, um, who basically repeated constantly uh, that we were all broken toys, and all he did was hand out and sell for a few copper broken toys. Um, more about that later. So in the in the following session, um, you actually met with uh, King Baldwin. Who else did you speak to? Uh, let's see. I have actual notes for some of those names. There's a Gorgon lady who was very nice, pleasant, uh, you know, wanted, wanted to really, you know, go into business with Musket Lawn, thought he was cool, or all the opposite of those things. Uh, Musket Lawn, do you remember this lady's name? Uh, Pentamorta. Is, yeah, Pentamorta. Okay. Uh, we well, met... You you can, you, have, you, it. you can have inspiration but, as well. But I also have, you know, uh, <laughs> Belshazzar, the zombie lord. Uh, there was Xenophon and the Seraphim later. King Baldwin himself. Uh, did we talk to... No, the, Arch the Architecture Guild guy we talked to later. He wasn't there. Yep, we talked to him later. Yeah. But I have his name as well. Um, okay, so what deal did you make with Baldwin? Baldwin. King Baldwin. If we clear out the... Uh, the dying king. The Hellespont, then he won't demolish the bar. Yep. yep. He, he will He will have... Uh, he will have Belshazzar revector the canal by... I think I said 0.2 degrees. <laughs> we'll save the bar. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, you know, a... The diggers had run into something called the Hellespont, and it had stopped progress. And they said, "Go clear it out, um, and uh, we'll save the bar." Um, doo -doo -doo, moving forward a little bit. Oh, I got these out of order a little bit, but yep. Yeah, so you there's the scene with Xenophon and Flesh Golem. You spoke to Primus. Oh, Helen spoke to a corpse. Yeah, uh, that's right. Turns out that's like her thing. Really you went into that. To, you uh, snuck out of the of Alto with um, you, you kind of smuggled Primus out of Alto, uh, kind of, <laughs> um, and went to the nearby village of Iltosh, um, where you heard that villagers were missing. Um, can anybody describe this part of the story arc? Um, well, we basically took a mission to find out what happened to the villagers. I don't remember what we're getting out of that mission, but we did it, and then. On our way to investigate, we fought some more not Zerg things in the desert, and then at this oasis, uh, found a strange guy who was acting kind of strange, gathering stuffs from some ruins, and uh, we followed him, and he led us to a strange ship that was stranded in the middle of the desert, uh, which, uh, oh, yeah, is like an intergalactic space traveling ship. Uh, or interdimensional, I don't know. It's a it's a time lordship of sorts, um, and yeah, in, it was piloted by a an ooze sentient creature that controlled people. Its previous crew had been destroyed. 
by a wreck. And so I had captured these local villagers and enthralled them and made doppelgangers of them to be crew. And we tried fighting it, that didn't work out. It basically forced us into making a deal where it would release its prisoners if we retrieved food and water to keep them alive for now and also found replacement uh, crew so that it didn't need them anymore. And you know, then it would release them without killing us, basically. Excellent. Yep, that's basically it. Um, long story short, you decide to do that and take this on as your mission. Um, I think Don Zorgo de Aleppo uh, was particularly um, motivated to help these people out. Welcome, Blaine. We're now a full party. Great. Um, we only have two sessions left in the recap. Uh, so you decide to return to Iltash and Alto. Um, when you get into Alto, what did you discover? Uh, remember there was a frog guy, but I might be jumping ahead. Yep, you're right. Yeah, but... there is. Uh, we first went to the go uh, send a message to my temple, to Helen's temple, to see if there is anybody who wanted to willingly join the crew of this uh, ship. Uh, and then on the way back, we found a the uh, Seraphim clearing out a house full of plague people, plagued people. Um, yep. We let them because we're, we can't not. And then um, when we went in, we found some more of uh, Primus's toys. Uh, Helen cast a, or Don Sorgo picked things up because he's immune to plague. So for the for the audience, yeah, we didn't explain what Primus's relationship with uh, the plague is. Yeah, well, we didn't know at this point. <laughs> okay, we just knew that he was making toys and giving people yeah. toys. And then we found some of those toys, and also um, Helen like finally the- decided to cast detect magic, and they're all glowing. Um, why did we kidnap this guy again? Why, why, why was kidnapping necessary? I don't know. It's, it's worked out. We only decided to kidnap the source of the plague and keep him around. Hmm. Well, you know, source is like... I don't know. A source. Like the... The source, like... A faucet is the source of the water. You know what I mean? Um... <laughs> I don't know if that metaphor worked at all or simply worked at all, but, um, you know, like I accept that it's it's coming from him, but he's not necessarily the originator. Like he's the messenger. Uh, anyway, we found some people under floorboards and Don Sorgo healed one of them to death. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the pieces Honest of, mistake. Honest yeah, mistake. All the parts of them that were not quite right uh, got vaporized, including their like innards. And there's some children, um, right? Right. Uh, there are some, yeah. Then there are some children and heroically healed some children to death. I don't think the I don't think the um, the uh, Hippocratic oath violation was a child, right? It was an adult. No, it was an adult. Yeah, yeah. There were some children, and then um, we did their their plague toy from them figured out that the toys are probably causing the plague is that when we figured it out or are we still idiots about it then I no i it think out. i think you figured it out then yeah oh yeah and then we tried to grill primus about it and he was just like we're all broken toys all right thanks bub um, <laughs> then we went to then we saw the kualadar the Waladar, yep. Waladar. Uh, guy with the yellow turban. Uh, the guy, one person gave a code word string and then then got some money from it. Then Blaine, or then um, Blaine threatened the turban guy. Turban turned into like a magic string that flew away. It just unwound itself and flew off. Yeah, yeah. 
just, it blew away. A magic textile. Yeah. Um. So you, um, you, you know, spoke with uh, Mazda Mundi over in the Slaughtered Lamb about, you know, getting the children, um, these these refugees out of Alto because they're clearly being hunted by the Seraphim. Um, Blaine comes in and just pays off that debt. He offers you a quest to um, uh, to put a, a, a magical ruby in the treasure hoard of a dragon turtle, which you refuse, um, and just pay him to take the uh, uh, the children to um, Waterdeep, I think. Um, and then you went to Iltash, where you met Quintus. Yes, Quintus, the highly intimidating badass motherfucker with a giant sword who was a robot you were intimidated or thought he was badass (laughs) he was did my my knuckle crack make it onto the mic there okay (laughs) (laughs) um if you had a webcam we'd have seen it i rocked his face and then uh quintus got stunned for like three rounds in a row and couldn't do anything and got his arse handed to him so yeah the party <laughs> monk really put it in some some work there um and uh after quintus was defeated he disintegrated and um became one with primus um primus grew some legs and got some of his memory back and you had a discussion with him which brings us to last session yay cool. the best session yet all right blaine because you just got here you want to take us through last session yeah, sure. Toads my goats. Let's see. Um, last session on Thundralia Nights. Barrel of Monkeys. Uh, we spent the first full hour of it um, basically <laughs> hunting monkeys um, because they had, uh, they stole, I think, Brass Jewel or something. Um, and he wanted to find the source of their jewel to slip through their poop. It was a whole thing. We're not, <laughs> let's just not revisit that. We found out there were, there were some oh, plague yeah. ridden monkeys. It was the best um, side quest we put him, ever. We put them in a barrel, and then we found out that Primus can absorb the plague from things up to 60 feet away at will. And some of the monkeys potentially died. I don't think we got a full count of the number of monkeys in there, but not mm. all of them came out of the barrel. In the so, barrel or in the dead in the bar? <laughs> uh, we, we put the plague ridden... That's what we were hunting them for, was because they had detect magic and oh yeah just asking for like counting them like uh oh he said <laughs> i was hunting them because i was thinking bad jokes moving on I mean, moving on yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we caught more than the necessary ones uh and so then he removed the plague from them and some of them whenever he opened it ran out some didn't and that's all there was um so that was a fun little experiment uh after that we went to um we went back to the thrall ship uh we had talked to Diggory about giving us some food. We bartered back and forth, and he said, yeah, sure. He gave us some food, went back to the ship. Ship got fed. We should be good in two weeks whenever um, Helen's people come to uh, relieve those people. And then Did we, we explain have... the plan to send them. Helen's people? Did we explain that? Helen mentioned it, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, at which point, I believe Helen wrote a letter to um, one of uh, Blaine's uh counterpart traders in oh god where was that freaking place um Um, lush pool is that right lapleton yeah and somewhere in the lapel league it was one of the two major cities she sent a thing over there asking them if they had seen uh uh evidence of the plague over there the the capital sheer talar sheer talar yeah yeah, there yeah um yeah, we, he sent a thing to see if it was over there because Primus, after like recovering some stuff, said, like, Tertius is yonder. Um, and so we... Yonder was basically where uh, Sher Talar is. So uh, Helen was basically sending it to a known acquaintance that we were trying to figure out basically if the plague had spread into the Lapple region of the country or the outskirts of Thendal. And uh, with the... Isinian Paper Raven, so that once he fills it out, he'll fly back and deliver the message. Um, and then we went to the Hellespont, which was all kinds of fun. Um, there was a big Sphinx who asked us riddles, and apparently we got it right. Um, I did not write down the riddles, but... Okay, so, I, so be because it. I love the riddle so much, I'm okay, going to yes. repeat it. <laughs> the riddle was, disease feasts on mortal 
and I was in I was vague about the word core or corpse. I said corpse hungrily. Uh, <laughs> they sicken and die by legion. Their fear, woe, and division drives you into my blank. And the answer was company. Yeah. Company. That's what we were looking for. What is company? company. Um, <laughs> uh, after which, uh, sh the right. Because like... if you don't, if you don't answer with what is company, it's roll initiative. So. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it had to be the form of a question, <laughs> or else uh, you lost your wager and enemies attacked you. In, in the honorary form of Alex Trebek. Yeah. Um, um, so we got the riddle right, and we went through the door, which basically disappeared after we walked through it, and we were in a jungle temple setting. Um, we found ourselves at this altar that we then... Um, there was one that had like what earth and water, light and dark, some sort of like primordial snake god. I think that Frask was familiar with from his uh, religious background. Um, I believe we put some dirt into one of them, some mud into one of them, and it opened up this little side passage over here yonder. And then we made our way into this new one with a fun little pyramid in the middle that had a fun counter. The doors locked all when we got in there. We're in like angle deep water or something. And we proceeded to spend the next 30 minutes wondering what the hell this timer was as it continued <laughs> to like flash different colors and count down. Um, eventually, I think Helen and Blaine just kind of sat back and were like, yep, just going to see what happens. And when we waited, the two of the doors opened up. So, And if we would have been hurt in any way, we would have apparently healed. Um, if we hadn't observed the water. <laughs> yes, yes. Water right, yeah, Fr Frask yep. have been absorbed. Um, that's fun. Uh, after that, there was a jade room on this right-hand side here, um, where, if I'm not mistaken, there was some sort of draconic script on the wall that was basically writing itself um, with, I think, the story of us inside the temple. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, it was, um, it was real time etching our story together on its walls while we were in it. It, had, okay. it went all the way back to like how we met and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that was like a feed or if they were just like if they were reducing the font as it just kept getting bigger or what what the case was for that. Um, or if there were any. We also didn't ask if there are any other um, stories on that wall besides our own. DM. I'm sorry. What? Were there any other stories on that wall besides our own? Not that you could tell, but you didn't take the time to read all of it. You probably shouldn't, because if you are reading a never-ending story... I mean, we're not we're not reading our story. We're seeing if there's anybody else's story in there. Oh, you, and just, just you so everyone... You think it's mostly about you. Just okay, so everyone knows, cool. this raised the question of, is Frask illiterate? There was some discussion. <laughs> After the session, I thought more about it, spoke with John. My conclusion is, Frask could be literate if he'd had a teacher and made an effort and I believe he has. However, it's not something he does naturally very well. So basically, depending on how articulate something is, he's going to have to roll intelligence checks to determine how correct he understands something. Um, but apparently you do definitely under, uh, recognize your own name. I recognize my own name, for sure. Simple sentences I can probably read. If it's like an academic work, I probably couldn't decipher it. It would take like a serious high intelligence role for me to get most of an academic sentence right but a layman sentence i could get mostly correct when reading um it's it's like if it's like if i had an impediment uh because of how um low my intelligence score is awesome um this actually raises an interesting question the names on the walls are they the draconic names that frask has assigned to us or are they our names kind of like <laughs> cuneiformed into like our actual names that's a great uh, question. I would say the the latter. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. My, okay. my names for you are like somewhat yeah, cute, somewhat insulting. Yeah. It's, no, it's really what it is. It's I like I think about what I think about each of you, and I assign you a name based on the trait that st mm -hmm. that stands out to Frask. Okay. So it's not what a deity would name you. It's what Frask would name you. So I think we ended on going through Checking the door the here. Door. Yeah, so uh, let me go ahead and reveal 
<laughs> oh, so in this room, you see, let me read it, a peaceful fountain uh, in the middle of the room, glowing slightly, illuminates the entire area. Um, there are three doors, two um, to either side, the east and west, and one large door um, up front. Um, doo -doo. The, uh, the huge stone door in the center with an inlay of two serpents and an Ouroboros, uh, once, uh, once embedded, like there's, there's something missing. There's, there's a, it's clearly like the statues that are supposed to be there, but aren't there anymore. All right. Um, I, I would like to do a stone cutting analysis of the room and markings in there. And is there any, obviously like here's trap runes, here's inlaid things, here's, you know, like the last um, room was heavily adorned. Does this, what does this one look like? Uh, so they're all it's all very artistic right mm -hmm. um th there's lots of there's lots of balance uh, if you get closer helen you'll see that there are um in this uh fountain there are two um uh two fish one white one black and they're kind of chasing each other mm -hmm. in like perfect symmetry around this yeah. uh, specifically like you know what, what is our plot the, the, the origins of the markings is there a clear you know like hey we're in these jerks temple kind of markings uh no not like that. The markings are all very symbolic. They're all about balance and duality and juxtaposition okay. and things like that. Okay. Okay. Are any of the other side doors open? Uh, uh, they're not open, but you haven't tried them, so. Does it, are there any markings on the doors that are not that are that are distinguishing? Not like just yeah, they're. Oh uh, yeah. On the left, there seem to be markings that indicate earth, and on the right, there seem to be in, uh, markings that indicate water. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything in this room that seems not asymmetrical or out of balance? No. It it seems very deliberately made to be in balance. Do the fish look tasty? <laughs> Ras can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> they look like fish. So yes. Everything here is sacred. Frask would actually stop you from touching the fish. Mm -hmm. What if I provided some chips? You could feed the fish. That would <laughs> be fine. There. Oh no, uh, I'm my fish and chips. I'm going to attempt to open the east door. You said that's yeah. the water one, right? Yep. The east door opens easily enough. Um, you just kind of, you know, give it a push, and the it's a heavy rock slab, but it doesn't require a strength check. Uh, it slides out of the way in this room, and you'll have to forgive Art. Um, there are nine sarcophagi in the center lined up in front of you. Divine sense. Okay, you don't get anything out of these sarcophagi. Okay. Um, Not undead at the moment. <laughs> so you'll just have to use the uh, the power of your imaginations to imagine this this long room with these with these heavy stone rectangular sarcophagi with um, uh carvings on top of on top of each sarcophagi um and they seem to be distinct the carvings seem to be distinct uh to each um each sarcophagus blake, the, okay. oh, sorry blake if you're there um there's not actually a door there it's just oh, okay. uh, uh it's just an archway so you see what seems uh -huh. to be like an entrance to Ooh. like it's just a pa little pathway down there's nothing on these columns here oh there's an, uh, Some, so similar there sort of anything in, in here Nothing. No, no. It's just it's like the beginning of a pa of a of a passage. Sarcophagi artwork is similar style and level of markings to the previous room. Nothing really. That's yes. One of the sarcophag one of the sarcophaguses uh, looks like it's been broken into. Like the lid is kind of off. Um, okay. Which one's that? Can we see inside of it or? I'm gonna arbitrarily say it's this one. And I'm gonna take a peek. Like look down inside. What do I see? Uh, you don't see anything inside. Looks empty. It looks empty. Okay. Well, somebody's already robbed this one. So they must uh, not either must have been deadly goodies or bad good or bad goodies. So would you say the sarcophagus is just like it's a jar right now? It's a jar, yeah. Okay. Then I would like to close it. It's not a door. As as it was supposed to be. That's a canopic jar, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Ask will okay. assist in closing it so that okay. it is as it should be. Yeah. So this so this is a door it. as well, John? Yep, that's a door. All right. Yeah, Muscalon are gonna and I are gonna check out this side. Poke the door. Let, let me handle these, Helen. 
poke yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. Open, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you open you open that side. Uh, um, Frask oops. would like to say something before they do. Okay. Um, Tread cautiously. That path is not as sacred as the other, but there is great mm-hmm. power still. It's just as sacred, just not to us, Frask. <laughs> Okay, so you open this door and you see a kind of workshop. Um, it looks like a like a it, it's a stone working, a ceramics, pottery, um, stuff like this, but with like really rudimentary tools. You see like chisels mm. and, oh, and like old drills, and there's not a skeleton there. Yeah. Again, <laughs> look around for any obvious like no, marks no, or runes no. on the floor, like you know. There's okay. Not any, you know. Well, roll me an investigation check, which is going to be pretty hard to fuck up. Investigation. Watch him do it. All right. So where's my description for this place? All right. A workshop full of uh, ancient tools, pottery works, and ceramics. Beautiful designs adorn the objects, walls, ceilings, depicting duality, light, dark, creation, destruction, life, and death. Um, the uh, Over the archway leading to the northern chamber um, are engraved with words in uh, draconic to pass. You must ask the question. Looking in here you see oh standby i gotta make sure that that particular thing isn't on the map <laughs> okay no we're good Ras, can you read these lizard squibbles you see uh, is it draconic oh, oh. yeah it is draconic. Blake, Blake uh, then he will attempt to read it and you will have to decide how difficult it is uh to understand well, the that, complexity. I mean, like half of us read Draconic. Wait, he does okay. Do, do we see that thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. You look. Okay. It's, it's easy to see. You look across. Um, it's just a big chasm, um, with kind of a snail plodding along on the other side. Um, it doesn't look hostile or anything. It's just, it's a, it's a big ass snail. It's mm-hmm. a right. really so big snail. <laughs> um, but the in the workshop. Okay, with a, the only other thing in the workshop is that on the table in the center, did you just crit an investigation check, Alan? Yeah, I rolled a 29 on an investigation. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so in the center, you find a, a diorama. And the diorama mm-hmm. is of the the facility you're standing in. You look and you're like, I, I know that's that's like that's the first room we were in here's the little chamber and then like mm-hmm. here's the you know the the stuff with the water and you look and like the water looks pretty realistic um there's like the other room um you look in like the fountains like it looks like the fountain is actually fountaining and if you look in the room that you're in you see little a little person staring into another tiny little diorama uh on the mm-hmm. on the workshop table to infinity There's a little person in here. Uh, there are there's a door. Five of them, there, I assume. There's a door yeah, right a door. here, right? Yeah, there's a door. Um, and there's a door in the diorama, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Blake's gonna like try to close the door in the diorama. You're gonna you're gonna attempt to like yeah. go in and close the door in the diorama. Okay. I use the tip of my dart and just be like. Yeah. So that that will not work. What what'll happen? Uh, it just doesn't move. I see. The, so it's the diorama real life of the door or the diorama in. door? Say what? Plain? The neither diorama the door? Move. The door does not... Neither door moves. Oh. So if I were to gently toss a, a pot at Blake's head, gently, what would happen in the diorama? <laughs> <laughs> do you do this? <laughs> gently. Not to actually hurt him <laughs> or anything. Wait, John, are you saying that this diorama is a diorama of the room we are in? It is of the dungeon you're in. Yes, most of oh, this yeah. is a test, even though we don't need that at this it's point. A, it's a mini version of what's going on, including Does it have containing additional itself. rooms we haven't found yet? It, it does. So if you look, and I'm actually just going to reveal the whole map to you now. Because you can see everything. The final boss. We got the, what's the Zelda map sound? There's not one. What are you talking hopefully, about? Hopefully we don't have to Did fight you get, anything, Isn't there a noise when you get the map and it unveils everything? Ooh, well, so we might have to fight some elementals. Items. Elementals are pretty neutral. Mm. 
Yeah, an earth and a water elemental. <gasps> sure. Oh my god, look at them. Look at them. I know what those are. They're yeah, so me cool. too. Well, not really. Not, not my character. They're, um, uh... Frask might have an inkling of what they are. Actually, maybe I need to roll again. So this is again. This basilisk is, again. Your your characters are looking in on this on this diorama, this this tabletop RPG, mm -hmm. if you'll have me. Yeah. Um, and uh, and like as you're looking in, like the people in the room are also looking in. If you toss a pot, one of the one of the the little guys in the diorama picks up a pot and tosses it. Um, so we um, see we see miniature versions of these creatures and elementals as well. Yes. Yes. Oh wow. Um, All right, so I'm taking it, this with me. This is awesome. If I toss, no, it I assume it's nailed down. down. I mean, like not nailed down. Are there are any of the tools? No, it, like is, all... it looks like it's hewn directly out of this stone table. You, you said the tool, the tools are all like relatively rudimentary. There's nothing like obviously like cool or. Yeah, there's nothing like... obviously cool about the tools. I'm gonna no, take I one mean, of the tools and just... toss it through the archway to see if it can get through. Yeah. It can. Yep. Okay. Uh, parlay, I guess. Okay, That's yeah, we're going to do parlay. Um, I think we're all pretty the, excited about this thing. Let me clear yeah. the turn order. Okay, roll initiative, guys. Wait, why are we... Oh, I, I just also... For, we, I, we all, like, at least three of us are wanting to do something about this item, so... Yeah, I mean, it's a cool a cool little thing. So yeah. I would say it's less of an item and more of a... more of, like, a part of the room. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. It does allow you to... To see kind of what's happening in the whole like okay so we'll all right so if i pick up a wait 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 parlay like this yeah, first right, yeah. oh um these little islands over here are there anything specific they have names attached to them they do if you're it's it's really difficult to make out through the thing but like the best thing you can do is uh the best you can do looking through the um uh, the, the diorama is you can see that these rocks are all like kind of flat on top. Okay. You can't like through the diorama. I know that on the map they have names. We'll get to that if you go over there, but you can't really make that out through the diorama. Uh, do they have? Um, let's assume that uh, I can see the names. Um, do those names connect with uh, the nine sarcophagus? Since there are nine. That's uh, weird. There are nine things. rocks, right? Yeah, and nine sarcophagus. <laughs> uh, yeah. So weird. Do do the images on the sarcophagus? Uh, do they have anything in common? Like, does one have a big moon on it, or a star, or a hermit, or a hanging hanged person? I, I can describe them to you if you'd like. Ah, uh, sure. The first but, sarcophagus has. You're gonna have to write this down because I'm, uh, I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> the first sarcophagus has an old man on it. The second sarcophagus okay. has a roguish thief on it. The third sarcophagus. Uh, has a depiction of a man's shadow. The fourth sarcophagus is a man crucified. The fifth sarcophagus is a warrior. The sixth sarcophagus is a crown. The seventh sarcophagus is a demon. The eighth sarcophagus is a skull. And the ninth sarcophagus are scales, balanced scales. Oh, Which is the broken sarcophagus? sarcophagus. Uh, that would be the that would be the warrior. Okay. So maybe uh, someone trade. took a weapon. All right, here. Um. I guess the only other thing. Uh, I guess it's very accurate on there. Is there anything in this? You said this is just a passageway. Is there really it's nothing just, else in there? Yes, there's nothing else. It's just a passageway. Is there anything on this main? Uh, centerpiece, or in like this area here, or this area here, um, or this block from vision. Those those aren't blocked from vision. Uh, so this there's stuff in the in the map that I stole um, that I didn't like. So this is just a door from this room to this room. Gotcha. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so here there seems to be a a shiny gold thing on a pedestal in here. That's kind of all you can make out. Um, Are you pinging the... somewhere? I'm not seeing your pings. It's the red ping up north by the elementals. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it either. Yeah, sir. Mm. Might be on DM layer only. I I was on DM layer. Aha! Uh -huh. My apologies. Up here. Hold by out on us, you son of a bitch. It's a gold thing on a pedestal, um, along with two elementals. Which those right. are the water and earth elementals. Mm-hmm. Correct. Those are two there. Um. 
And does there seem to be any, this is probably my last question. Um, does there seem, seem to be any other entrance way into this chamber? Like I see, no. it looks like there's a door here to something, I guess. There is a door there. Yes. And there's, there's some no little river here. That, that does not somewhere. Connect. Okay. Um, can we see a bottom at the, of this? No, no. So if we like put our hand into the diorama to just like go all the way to the floor, like a Mary Poppins trick. It is too small for your elbow. Damn. Shrink my elbow. Oh, um. that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect you to ask that. I thought you were going to ask a lot of stupid stuff, but not this not stupid. But <laughs> I was, did not. I was not uh, one of them. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to start looking okay. at these, uh, so trying to solve the, this uh, puzzle over here. I'm not... uh, I want to know if Frask can see the, uh, these two creatures, and if so, I want to know if Frask can... Like, I want to figure out how much Frask knows about them. Okay. Uh, roll me a religion check. Okay. Not great. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So it's pretty obvious to you that these are quaddles or aspects of quaddles, and they're meant to represent the two serpent gods here that form the infinite Ouroboros that existed like even primordial beings and all the gods themselves. All right, Frask is going to... I forget what their names are. It's like Asmodeus and something else. One well, has As scales, one has feathers. Asmodeus is like uh, the name of Satan, basically, in this world. But Asmodeus is actually, uh, what's its name? The the uh, the snake god. Yeah. And then yeah. the other one's like Jinnerath or something, and that's the good one. But I forget their names. Uh, they're awesome. They're like the yeah. coolest mythology in D and D, in my opinion. Yeah, um, so that's what they are, or at least that's what they're meant to represent. They're obviously gotcha. too small to be gods themselves. Gotcha. But they could be actual quaddles, or they could be representations of quaddles. I'm not sure which. Correct. Okay. Frask is going to once again speak and say, "Like, we must tread very carefully. This place is incredibly important." Do not take anything that is not given, and if it is given, be cautious. I think we can all agree we're looking at Frass to not grab shiny stuff, right? <laughs> yes, he's the one with impulse control problems, Blaine. You know, Frass loves to if grab If that's your metal real things. name. It was metal. Big metal head. <laughs> all right that's... um okay helen all right so um quick thing i can walk in here yep uh is there any in, like do we is there anything noticeable about this uh snail uh yeah it's a snail it's plodding along and it's turning the ground behind it into glass as it's plodding along um it's huge it's like the size of two people it's got a really shiny shell um and it's got five big ass things coming out of its head but it's not aggressive it's just kind of like slurping along it goes up a wall a little bit and then like comes back down and turns around it's just uh -huh. having a good day Okay, and if I like uh, tap on the air, oh, this is like a big pit, right? <laughs> yeah, so before we get much further, I should mention that as you approach the pit, you hear uh, a lot of voices whispering at you. Um, okay. You don't understand the language. Creepy um, vibes? Oh, you get a lot of creepy vibes. Yep, um, there's, but it's in like hundreds of voices in lots of different languages. Um, but you don't know any of the languages. Oh, God. <laughs> Remember Frask's warnings, please. Yeah, I'm not going to jump into the, like, literal abyss over here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have no here, idea. Is there anything over... In the, like, are these anything, or are they just no. part of the... No, that's just the passageway down here. As I approach the uh, Arcana over here... Um, what 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 do we see now that I'm close? Because you said before we couldn't. Is it just that we can see that these are actually literally labeled? Yeah. So these are like um, they have flatted tops, and on on like on the stones themselves, they have symbols. Um, and the symbols are the hermit, the moon, the star, the hanged man. Um, and 
each okay. of them has a symbol. Again, and roll me a perception check. Sure. Yeah, no problem. It's whatever this is, plus five. Is it... That's fine. Um, 29? Okay. Uh, I don't know why I made you roll. I don't know. Because it's not going to do it. So... <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's all you that's that's all you see. You see, okay. they're basically I know they look like rocks in the map, but they're more like raised like stepping stones. It, are they jumping distance? They are jumping distance. I'm gonna throw a rock on the hermit. Okay. Yeah. You, you, the rock kind of skittles across. Um, I could make you roll a dexterity check, uh, yeah. but it the rock just kind of bloop. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right, last thing, I guess. I'm going to open the corresponding sarcophagus to the hermit, or attempt to. Okay. Um, and would, can Frask and hear this? Because uh, if Frask can hear this, Frask might try to intervene. I don't know, Frask. It depends on where you are. Yeah, Frask was over here warning people, but Helen did leave like this place to go over here, so she would have okay. passed you to go over here. Right. So I, it's just a, I was not sure if through these rooms Frask could hear this happening or not. So if not, no, it's fine. Yeah, maybe I'm about to get got. Um. Okay. Well, Helen, you you can attempt to open it. Um. Roll me a strength check. A strength check. I'm really yep. strong. Curiosity killed the cleric. Eh. Wouldn't be the first thing. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna do it. <laughs> Since Blaine uh, was interested in this, uh, can I'll Blaine be over up. there assisting her so yeah. she can get uh, help? Okay. Is that all right? Yep. Yeah, you're probably stronger than me, but she would think. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that's not gonna do it. No. <laughs> Um, it, these are big, heavy lids. They have like these really ornate decorations on top. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 going to take a lot more. Uh, Use the lever, dum dums. <laughs> All right, I'll yield to musket long then. Okay, musket long. Okay. Uh, so, use looking at the various crafting bits and supplies and materials around. Um, I want to build a miniature suspension bridge. And place it in the model across the gap and see what happens. Okay. So the voices start whispering to you. Do you continue to construct a bridge? In the model, the voices whisper to him? Oh, you, oh he's. I'm sorry. Oh, in the model, he's doing He's yes. trying okay. to impose things into yes. the world. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so if you are putting an object into the diorama, it does not appear in the dungeon. Okay. Damn, that would have been really cool. <laughs> okay, well, making a real bridge is a little bit tougher, but we can work on that next. Uh, so uh, you hear voices at the gap is what you hear? Yeah, once you enter this like kind of ledge uh -huh. area, like you start to hear these these whispers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. They say, Musket Lawn, you're really cool. You don't know what they say. All okay. Right. They don't say jump. Very tense. They, uh, you don't know what they say. Okay. Frask, uh, uh, hmm. musket, musket lawn. Frask gets more tense when he sees that chasm and hears those voices than he did when he saw the frog. You're afraid of heights? Oh, poor little baby. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, let's make that cannon. Hmm. I want to see that snail thing. It looks really cool. Ah. Good. All right, well, uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, uh, Don Sargo. Um, I honestly don't have much. Could you remind me what the, the thing above the door said? It was something about asking the right question uh, to pass. Yeah. Yes, it's basically says, it. <laughs> to pass, you must ask. You must ask the question. Okay, that means nothing to me. Oh, yeah, I don't have much to contribute at the moment, except I suppose someone ought to try scattering sand across the gap and <laughs> the other side seeing if perhaps any of these um, uh, symbols spell out the name of God in a particular order. 
<laughs> if I'm remembering this right. All great guesses. I love that movie. <laughs> so those are very good. I don't. I don't have much. So no, pass. That, that's the other puzzle. The other. <laughs> Wrong god, right? Okay. Um, we'll go back to uh, Blake. Well, it's Isaiah right. starts with the tray. <laughs> um. John often gets lost in his own dungeons. Um, was there any specific thing on any of these pillars in the first room? No. All of them are the same? They're, yeah. Though, well, they're not, you know, it, they're, again, it's the same thing. Ornately um, uh, decorated, but you don't find anything particularly interesting on them. Is there any difference between what we have seen, observed inside the actual dungeon so far, that is different than the diorama? Nope. It looks, it looks the same. Um... And Helen was trying to open one of the sarcophagi. Mm-hmm. And you said inside the broken warrior one, there was nothing inside there? There was nothing all. inside. That's right. <laughs> um, do we Puzzle. make any, did we make any assessment of the water in here? Was it green glowing water? I guess is. It's like it's it's aquamarine. It's just a oh, nice, right. pretty like ocean color that's illuminated, and it, and in fact, it's the water that illuminates the room, not like torches. Okay. Now, when we were in that room, we saw a wall, not a door, right? It's a it's a door. It's a it big a door. door, but it has it has essentially a space for two keys. For each of the puzzles we're trying to do. <laughs> so two keys um in the Ouroboros, right yep um uh yeah with this one like i've linked up all but maybe three of the sarcophagus to the stepping stones yeah i mean we can just openly discuss that um, okay. yeah i think uh, the old man's I think Old Man's Hermit, yep. Hangman um, is the crucified guy. Yep. That's right. Chariot guess. is the warrior. Yep. Frown is the emperor. Yep. Demon devils. Mm -hmm. Skull death. Scales yep. justice. Skills justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so the, it's the, the thief and the shadow man were the last two? Yeah. You, you said there was a shadow. Is the shadow of a man or is it shadow of something else? It's, it's the shadow of a man. Okay. Oh, it's not. A, it's, it's mostly. Uh, it's mostly the shadow part. Okay. Can I share some? Okay. Can I share a little meta information for the party to consider since we're solving sure, a riddle? Sure, I think we sure. tend to go meta when the riddle solving, right? Yeah. 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 That's um, riddles. So, uh, this side, and the the abyss there is literally probably going to uh, hell, yeah. and this is the devil. So although this side is the side of Earth. It's possible that this or its tomb would actually have the key for this side because the devil is literally Asmodeus, which is the serpent of this side. So it might be okay. like a yeah. weird. It could be a trick like that. Yeah, it's also just like the Arcana for tarot cards, right? Yeah. So that's I, a good I question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think Helen would automatically know that, considering every for session I use tarot cards. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Too. Helen would. I would still like you to guess because puzzles are for players. Oh, of course, yeah. No. You can, you can so, Wikipedia it all day. Yeah, I, I, the, to me, the thief is the star and the the man's shadow is the moon, but I'm not. That's what I was I was thinking, too. Um, yeah, I was either that or the rogue and thief would be... Um, like I guess the hangman would be potentially the crucified person. That was my thought. Yeah, um, but then the moon and the star are the two that kind of it, that's either the rogue or that's the shadow, you know. Um, but I will say, like with a if if we're thinking of a star as like the thing that is like in balance with the moon, as far as like light reflection goes, day and night, um, those are the only two that have any kind of a. Uh, balance 
with with the puzzle if that makes sense um that would lead me to to look at those two stones or stepping stones whatever at least uh go for it yeah i mean i guess uh, is that do, is there any way i can investigate to see if there's something more to this star and moon stuff like step one step two um I'm, I'm sorry can you restate your question so blake's right here right mm -hmm. and you said it's just an easy leap to right here right it would be okay so let's let's do that boop okay you jump on the moon, you jump on the moon. Uh, okay. when you I do mean, that the water stirs around you okay and a water weird rises up from the water and he attacks you Oh, were you joking or is that a real thing? I'm not joking. Oh, okay. um, cool. He, uh, <laughs> uh, that what? does not hit. The fuck is a water weird? Okay. Um, um, that, that, oh, geez. It's, uh, does everybody see this on the diorama? Uh, yes, everyone would see that on the diorama. Okay. Just make sure. All right. Now, are we in an initiative to where we can't move until this water weird is going to come up and attack you? My, my main concern. Hit. No. Um, my main concern was that uh, I was really just trying to get an idea of what's on these. You said they're basically flat stones. But they have some yes. sort of an interpretation on them. Yes, they have. They have these symbols on them. And so, your 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 natural interpretation of these symbols are the names that I put on <laughs> the rocks. Okay. <laughs> so did anything happen to that symbol when I jumped on it? No. Just, okay. No. Um. Then yeah, I would like to uh, just hop right back over here okay um the water weirds are going to return to their slumber they're not taking opportunity attacks no they won't um if, if they would have i would have stepped at the wind. they'll just uh Bitches. they'll just kind of they, they literally just like splash down and become part of the the only other thing i wanted to describe because you were on a rock you did get to see it um when you step well, when you step onto the rock, uh, you 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 get a a vision. There's actually no wall here. Um, it seems to just kind of go. This you're like in a little eddy, right? Um, kind of a like a, a small bay or something. Uh, but out past that, the water, you know, there there aren't any ripples. Um, it just becomes this like endless see into black nothingness, um, except for way 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 out. There seems to be a storm, and you can only tell that because of small flicks of uh, soundless lightning illuminating its voluminous clouds. Okay. Uh, cool, cool story. Um, what happens if I just touch the water from where I'm at? Um, if you disturb the water, uh, you do the water weirds come back. Yes, and it's okay. going to do that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it misses, but. Yeah. When you disturb the water, the water weird is going to come out and come out to play. So even if I don't touch the water but hit the the slab, it it triggers. You jumped. The you jumped on the moon, right? I mean, if I could jump to the star, sure. It's a bit. Jump to the hermit. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I guess jump to the hermit. Okay, we'll put your token on the hermit. Boop. Uh, nothing happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, the reason we couldn't find the moon and the star is because they're not featured. And the ones that are featured are the ones we need to jump to. Okay, if that's the case, let me get out my handy dandy polygon tool. What do you mean they're not featured? What is, it is like, kind of the, no, uh, there's no tomb representing the moon. And then. This is my theory. I thought there were nine for nine. There are that's nine. Future. So the hermit was old man, that's one. They don't necessarily yeah, have one for one. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, so if Hermit is is sarcophagus number one in order at least, um, I mean, it, it makes me think that this would be some sort of a an order puzzle. That could be that too, um, based on the sarcophagus. So old man, we said rogue was going to be what star? That was the guess. Control C that. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just test this theory out here. Um, we're going to go to. From this reminds the hermit me of uh, Last Crusade. To, let's go to, what do you think, Hangman think or Star Yeah. 
Uh, I think it is one of those two. Or the there are two theories, and I think each one supports a different one. But uh, actually, I think the hopscotch order is probably right. So try the star. star first. All right, hopscotch to star. Nothing happens. Awesome. Okay, okay. so sort of plug out on that. Boop to boop. Okay. Um, then move your move your token when you do this, by the way. Okay. Uh, well, I'm in Polygon tool, so. Oh. <laughs> if, if you if you'll help me with that, I'll, I'll we'll move it. I'll move it. Appreciate it's it. Next um, to moon, then, right? Next to moon. Okay, you yeah. jump you jump to moon and nothing happens. And then it's yeah, hangman, it's... right? Yep. So that's the crucified person. Boop. Okay. Okay. You jump to the hangman uh, and nothing. And happens. then to chariot. You should check the chariot's not broken. The stone. Like, I mean, it is. Oh, no, is no, like the, the stone in front broken. of me is broken? broken? So you're asking, is the stepping stone broken? Yeah. Is it? John. John? Uh, it, it's a little fucked up. There's a big, like, so you look at the at the chariot stone, and it's got this, like, it's it's kind of broken in two. It's still there. You can still jump to it, but um, this requires an athletics or acrobatics yeah, check. Yeah, let, let me, yeah, let me see if I can bless you or something. I think I'm probably in range, yeah. I mean, if you come up to the water edge, yeah. Oh, no, it's three creatures. Okay, then... You can come up to the water edge. Right, so we, we've left the initiative, uh, and the others can approach this range. now just free time, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can okay. just approach this free time. Yep. It's, it's it's attack roll or uh, saving throw. Uh, so I have a plus seven to acrobatics. A... Okay. You should probably be good, right? Okay, so yeah. The next one should be chariot then, right? All right. I think so. Top. Let's top to chariot. Do an acrobatics check. Eighteen. Nice. Eighteen is good. Eighteen okay. is good enough. Then, All right. So then, you hop. You're kind of. you kind of got your foot on, and nothing happens when you jump on the chariot. Then emperor. Then yeah. emperor. Jump on the emperor. Nothing happens. Then the devil. You jump onto yeah. the devil. Nothing happens. And then it should be death. You teleported to Georgia. <laughs> you jump onto death, and nothing happens. And justice. And as you jump onto justice, the tide <laughs> seems to go out. Um, the water begins to recede. Um, and here in the middle, in the sand, poking up a little bit, you find um, a little bit of a statue of a snake in a half circle. Um, where is it at? It's like right here in the middle. The, the water's gone. Okay. The water uh, receded I... as if it were a tide. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to step down and grab it. Okay. You pick it up. Um, you know, it's about the size of your arm, but it makes this half circle, um, and it looks like it would fit perfectly in that room you saw before. Is it the light or the dark one? It, it's the light one. Okay, cool. There we go. All right, and then I will I will leave leave the chamber triumphant and be like, Helen, look at the key. Check it out. Uh, yeah. I high five him. High fives. <laughs> high fives all around. High fives all around, everybody. Hold on. Huzzah! All right, I, mean, I guess I guess we can get a thing. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I guess you can't really. We need to get the snail's attention. Ah oh, man, no, I guess I guess convincing you to open a sarcophagus is, would be meddling in my player's affairs. Ah. I mean, we we are the first one. <laughs> um. Okay. I mean, All at right, this point, so... we don't have much of a. What's what's this? Yeah, what's the uh, range on this thing as far as the distance? Uh, the distance. Thirty-five feet. Yep. Is any of this wall climbable? Uh, yeah, it is. I want to hear. Uh, uh, okay. Somebody else can go. <laughs> if I go up to the wall and use my mason's tools and try to like chalk out a little handhold, how does that go? Uh, put your token where you want your token to be. Like just over here is like a sample wall, like you know this this part here over the ground. Like yeah, just sink into the rock. How does it go? We have among Blank. us, sorry, we have among us rope. Like yes, if that's exactly right. right. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna tie that yeah. on to Musket Lawn's belt just before he goes on this <laughs> ex escapade. Okay. Um. So you try to take a chunk out of this wall. It's hardy material. You don't exactly know what it is. You do like you know a little bit does come off, but mm. it it's not something you could tunnel through. No, but I could. We could put handholds or pythons into it, or you know, I have mason's tools. I have stoneworking tools here. I could, you know, presumably pound us some, uh, you know, 
if we want to climb across the the smart way and you know use tools on the side i said it's inevitably a magic thing or this is a bad idea i mean a fiend from hell is going to come out and smack you magic things never like it when you just try to you know work your way through it the honest way <laughs> can we take a top of the hour oh uh, yeah, yeah. Another beer. sorry about that all right we'll take a top of the hour break folks we'll be right back players have solved the first puzzle Huzzah.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Um, we're going to get back to puzzle solving. So the players have solved one puzzle. Um, and uh, all right, we're right back to it. Muscalon was chipping away at a cave uh, cave wall. Okay. Oh, there he is. Yep. Yeah. So Muscalon, right. you're ch you're chipping away at a cave wall. Right. Yeah. Just you know, verifying. Okay, it's not like magically hard in stone. You know, if it, we want to, if we want to try crossing it, I can pound in spikes and we can try doing it that way. But you know, magic cave never goes well. As a backup plan, it's not a bad idea. Thoughts? Feelings? Anybody? Uh, Bueller? Perhaps it is better to leave this place undisturbed than to try to cross that canyon. Where are we going to go, Frasky? There's no other way to the snail. We want to see the snail. Look at it! Who's a big snaily boy? Does it hear me? Does it react? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe it's a good boy. I don't know. It's a good snail. <laughs> I trust nothing on this side of the temple. Yeah, and that's the other side. So that's why we should get over there to the snail. So all the while we're standing we here, you're, you're, you're hearing these, these whispers in your ear. Um, can I, can you know, I ask the voices, what is their quest? <laughs> when you say the words, what is, to what, what might you call them? Bridge parts appear here and here. I did a thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then after you say their quest, they disappear. <laughs> okay, so we got there's the puzzle two. So what is this part one two? What is uh, what your is that? what one, is two, three, that? Four, you five, get six, you get seven. three bridge pieces. What uh, is okay. the name you of the need, snail? You need four bridge pieces to see to complete the puzzle. What is the question? What is the answer? answer? What is the what answer? is the hell spot? None of those are the answer. Uh, what did above the door say again? You must ask the question. To pass, you must ask the question. Okay. I I will, as the DM, I don't want to send you down the wrong path. It's, I think it's unlikely for you to guess it at random. So, so is we something we're supposed to do more clear searches? Investigate. Think... There is something mm -hmm. in this dungeon that can help you. I what mean, the we can still mount an exhaustion attack in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep putting words in chat, and if we get any, <laughs> okay. if I see the word in chat, I will give it to you. All right, How's viewers. Yeah, we we'll start I'm gonna, I'm gonna look back at this in this room and see if there's anything I've missed. Uh, Where's uh, the which, answer? Which room? Can you the, toss the dwarf? Uh, it's a few extra words. The miniature but... room. Uh, okay, uh, I don't think you missed anything, Helen. And there's nothing different between the table and reality. No. We don't. No, they look to be mirrors of each other. Or one is a superset of the other, etc. What is the snail? <laughs> um. Nope. Ask what was the name of this like whole religious thing that y'all brought up? Or this is like the Ouroboros. This is uh, um. Hold on, I I have the articles open. So what is the Ouroboros? Let me let me look uh, it up. Ouroboros is not it. Five E. Or anything uh. on the magic writing wall, maybe? I don't know, has somebody else solved this puzzle before? Do you speak Draconic, Dunsor? Okay. Oh, I do not. Well, I'll, I'll I do. Go with yeah. Oh. I so the, the world serpent is what this is a temple to. So, Helen, you're you're reading this, this script as it appears, and you kind of back up a bit, and it says, what? um, you know, musket lawn teeters on the edge, a chipping oh. on, a, on a piece of is stone it? as... An infinite ring voices in many languages. Is it what is all the dead, law? All 
all unknown ask him what he cannot something he cannot understand what is the weave hmm. what is the what what is the what, what is Thank the you. weave oh is it in chat now? okay then i go back to the pit and say what is the weave and as you say what is the weave do 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 you get a bridge it's the sick new dance craze it's sweeping the nation Whoop. what a beautiful bridge mm-hmm. Ah, uh, mm. mine would have been prettier. All right, go ahead. Buzz I was up with no tongues. Please, don't worry. <laughs> I'll, I'll bravely march forward towards the snail. You are the uh, lightest. Boy. Um, I forgot to ask, um, where is Primus and Buckhorn in this whole thing? They are not yeah. entering the dungeon with us. Great question. Uh, uh, I thought I thought they were with us, but they are some, not with us. Somebody you. has to clean the pen uh, nib. I legitimately you know. didn't realize uh, Primus I was think, a part I of I think we made a major mistake here. <laughs> I legitimately didn't know Primus was a part of the party. I thought that he kind of became his own NPC who was going around doing his own thing now. Nah, man, he's with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I would have you had him with us. But... Buckhorn, the camel, and Primus are outside. Okay. Um, yeah, I would have rather had them come with us. And the horse. So, Don Sorgo, I have a very simple well, I, question I like for you. I would have mule with me. He's medium-sized. He would... You, you ride him indoors, right? He's medium sized. <laughs> Into a bar, yeah. Do you, uh, off the bridge. I, have, I have a very simple question for you. Do you fuck with the snail? I'm not going to fuck with the snail. I'm just going to say okay. hi. It continues eating the floor. Uh-huh. Okay. So what what type? Just the actual floor? Is, there's there's no lichen. There's no like pebbles he's sweeping up. He's just licking the surface. He is slowly eating the stone very very slowly at a snail's pace you might say uh that's a door when you open it you find laying on the ground here a ha- a, a snake in a half circle cool i will take it and bring it back okay mm-hmm. again not fucking with the what snail is the snail close is the snail kind of pat him on the back or something but i'll leave <laughs> must want to do that <laughs> up close to the snail's shell look like made of anything in particular like it's just a big snail or is there something more oh the snail shell, shell looks dope as fuck mm-hmm. you've not seen uh, a carapace like this ever in your life it glistens in like a rainbow light um it looks mm-hmm. i don't know how else to describe a dope shell but it's got a dope shell mm-hmm. might he start singing a song about how shiny it is mm-hmm. it's so shiny can i pet the snail you can try I want to pet the snail. You're going to have to roll initiative. <laughs> you want to pet the snail? <laughs> yes! Can, wait, can he roll an animal handling check first? Uh, I'll allow an animal handling check. Yeah, does it, does it get straight in me approaching? Yeah. I don't want to pet the snail if I want to be nice to the snail. So yeah, if okay. it looks, doesn't like me uh, getting near, I'll back off. Oh! No. <laughs> it's going to be initiative. Bail. Bail. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Link is absolutely gonna say like fucking bail. Fuck it on. You know, now we're gonna have to kill at least one other thing in this dungeon. <laughs> Musket line? Huh? Oh, okay. I mean, if it makes I mean, it bad. I figure we just get across the bridge and I don't know, shout out the wrong I'm answer. I'm not changing yeah. anything. I just wanna pet the snail. It looks very cool. What is love, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Mm. And John Sorgo fell into the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> All That's right. Like hell. Is that double credit? Oh, oh, Jesus. So yeah, look at that. How about that? Mm. Uh, That's good. Did you get another rope, John? Uh, yeah, you are absolutely right about that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean? What do, you, what do you mean another? Every campaign we've done in D and D's had a rope. Was, was there one in the first campaign? Ground. Oh yeah, there was. There was. It's his favorite ground hazard adjacent monster. <laughs> now is it hanging off from the ground or from the ceiling? From the ceiling, of course. <laughs> Directly over the bridge. <laughs> That's at least it's over the bridge. So there's like a 50% chance if it drops you, you'll catch the bridge. But you all, you all, okay. So um, what I will say is that um, the flail snail is going to get to go first because it's the one that was hacked off. Um, flail snail? Hacked off? I mean, it was very kind. Wow, flail snail, that's a classic. You know, I called it? it a pretty snail. I called it thing. pretty. 
Is the flail snail older than the friggin' what's it called? The spike, spike. The roper. Spike white roper. Summon roper. the flail snail. I think flail snail is like really cheesy old school D and D. No, it flails. It hits things like a flail. all against the same target. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, all right. one initiative. One. Like? So, yeah, because you petted it. It turned around and stacked you. Does an 18 hit musket lung? Um, well, let's see. Once I cast... Nope. Uh, shield. Ah. Uh, mm. So. No. Shield's busted. I have a 17. Five? Yeah, it's busted. I love it. Uh, okay. so, yeah. The 17 Every... plus 5, better than 18. Uh, Every uh, wizard only in one of those states, right? So, yeah. So, uh, Blake... What I will say is, as soon as the flail, uh, the flail snail starts hit, beating on musket lawn, um, you uh, you spy this uh, this roper come to life and is looking at Don Sorgo as a tasty treat. I mean, he is honest about that. Snack. Um, fuck me. Um, how far off from the the ceiling is he? Uh, I wouldn't say more than 30 feet. Oh, so there's no possible way I can, like, hit him. Um, I'd say he's, he's 20 feet up. I mean, okay, so there's no way I can actually hurt the roper with my fists. Uh, no, not unless you can jump 20 feet in the air. How Goku uh, are you? Actually, that's a good you question. Have a lot of range, actually, what, is, what, what is my jump speed? Actually, how do you determine that? You cannot jump 20 feet in the air. No, I mean, but how do you determine jump height? I think there is something It is it, your, right? your standing jump height is like your strength, and your running jump height is like your athletics or something like that. I don't know. Oh. Chat can find it. I'm probably totally wrong. Yeah, somebody in chat who's ever watching this thing, tell yeah. us. Where my rule warriors at? If you yeah, make it. Rule warriors. A long jump, a high jump is three plus, uh, a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. Three plus one strength modifier, which is man, I wish I could zero. jump three feet by default. You can, so you I can, can high jump, jump three feet. I can high jump. That's yep, not that impressive. Um, <laughs> but what about like I a mean, running jump? It's pretty impressive for for a dude. What's the <laughs> running jump? The long jump is, um, you can cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move up to ten feet. Um, Ooh, I'm really good at helping people throw rocks. If you want to throw rocks, talk to me. A number of feet up to your strength score. You make a long jump. You know, assuming Stupid when you make a any long jump. Okay. Yep, it's strength. Okay. Well, then fuck that. Uh, good luck, Don Zargo. Um, <laughs> I do not think there's really I anything I can really. <laughs> um, hmm. You can mm -hmm. punch the stone roper in the diagram. <laughs> I mean, I can't do anything to this guy. The only thing I could do would be to run all the way fucking over here just to punch the flail snail. No, no, we don't want to punch the pretty snail. We'll just get away. He's slow. I, I, I will defer my, my turn. Uh, okay. Hell until I fucking need to. <laughs> Crispy Christ. All right. Um, I, I'll be honest, gents. I don't know... Like maybe we can just GTFO, right? Right? I mean, they're both slow-moving yeah. creatures. Yeah. As long it's, as wait, all of us escape. Who has the key? Don Sorgo? I got it. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, double du double donkey time. All right. Um, okay. I am going to cast Bless on Musculon. Don Sorgo. And Blake Blaine. And then... How far can I get the away? Beep, 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 beep. Alright, and then I don't believe I have a bonus action. Anything. Alright. Oh. That'd make it Muscalon's turn. Muscalon, you attempted to gently caress the snail, and it did not appreciate that. Okay, 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 I understand. You don't want to be touched. I'm back enough. Um, will it let me disengage, or I'll give it an attack of opportunity, probably? 
Oh, it's probably going to attack opportunity. Okay. You could actually use um, the engage action, though. But you still have shield up, don't you? Um, what's the so, thing on that the beginning of your next? I think it's to the beginning of my next turn. Okay. Until uh, the start of your next yeah. turn, yeah. So. so it's gone now, yeah. yeah. Is the bridge made of stone or wood? Magic. Uh, it's made of magic. Okay. And the magic. What does it appear to be? It appears to be stone. And mm -hmm. it's actually four separate stone, you know, rectangles. So how does a disengage action work again? You, you take your action and you disengage. All right, but you just get it if you focus on doing it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Take your action, disengage, then you can move uh, up to your movement. Speed. Yeah. Okay. Or you can take your action to dash and then eat an attack. Double your movement, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm more inclined to that, especially with the rope around the bridge. I don't want to give it less mm -hmm. opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to just step up to haul ass and, yeah, get here, jaw, or, and you, you make the roll when I'm standing here, I guess. Yep. Right. Right. Flail style, yeah! He hits you for nine bludgeoning damage. Okay. okay. I don't think we're going to live through that. Uh, he only gets one. I looked up the rules. Flail snails yeah. only get. They don't get to 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 pent a flail on you for with yeah. react with his reaction. Yeah, so. you don't have multi attack on your reaction. Yeah, yeah. hydras do. This flail is why opportunity up. attacks are super dangerous when you're low level, and not as dangerous when you're a higher level because you take it. Like, you right. get one attack. Normally they hit you three times. So. Mm. Actually, do I even need the double move to get that far? Uh, one, two, three. Four, I think, uh, but five, you may six. take an opportunity attack from the rope burp. I don't know what his no. range is. But... Rope's not in. No, it's not adjacent. Yeah. Uh, right, but... No, I mean, if you're trying to make it across the bridge. Do you have whip mastery? I don't know. What's the range on a rope? I... Okay. Well, I can only move 30, so okay, I got to use the double to get across I'm the bridge. I'm not going to do it here. I'll look up the roll later. I don't actually know if they would get if it would get an opportunity to attack on you. Uh, oh. It's, yeah. Actually, would it be considered, yeah. would it be considered how having held its action? Is was, question, yeah. you know? Like, situationally, if you say it's holding an action waiting for somebody to cross, it's fine by me if you want to go for oh. it. Oh, well then, yeah, I will. There we go. I mean, oh. That makes sense with what he's done. That's what oh. he does. He's, he's an ambush predator. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. It's an 11, though. I assume that misses. All right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, get back over here. <laughs> Yes, yeah, like a guy wearing a shirt and all of it doesn't hit. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, that makes it done, Thorgo. Run. You guys are Run. fucking yeah, lucky. I'm just gonna initiative roll out and shallow. Oh, the only person he can hit is Blake. Fucking run. And I held my initiative till I saw fit. Mm -hmm. I deferred my turn. Okay. Does the you bridge go away once we're back and on so the side? I will side? fucking run. <laughs> the bridge does not does not disappear. Mm. Okay, so you're all gonna book it. I'm mm. I'm gonna say that you all book it. Okay. So, so, so can we John... intentionally fuck up the puzzle now? What what was it? it was like the 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 question is. Um, the question is spam. What, what is spam? What is spam? Yeah. What was the question? What is, what is the weave? weave? What is or the what, weave? what is spam? It's when the te the rover's tendrils all mash together, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, does, the John, go, yeah. does the bridge go away? John, no. the, no. the answer to the opportunity attack question is: um, whenever you move out of reach, so Ropers have a really be, long reach. Yeah, they do. Right, they have a five foot reach attack and a fifty foot reach attack. Oh okay. wow! So, so you have he to took... move out of a fifty foot reach attack. So he, the, he took his reaction to attack uh, Muscalon, missed. Yeah, it, so. that's, that's, well, technically Muscalon did not leave a 50 foot reach. Yeah. What? He's, up 20, Muscalon, he's up 20 feet. Yeah, my initial, you can do your my initial move was uh, to yeah, here. Yeah, but it's easy, right? So. Yeah, like, I would still be within I'm 50 feet. Exactly yeah. this shit. I don't know how far away he is, but you get the idea, like, if he can probably reach you if you get an opportunity attack. If you move 50 feet away, if you move 55, and then you do. He's only going to get one opportunity attack, though. And he yeah. used it. He used it. So, so run. Yeah, anyway, we run. You run, yeah. Uh, I, I will say you guys make it. Um, Frask, get over here. Yep. 
Okay, so um, you come to the help. door. <laughs> yeah, I guess we uh, could have bought Mr. Roper for experience, but... Uh, I put mine in the light box key check thing? Yeah, orb it's like, there's an inlay of, of an yeah, orb yeah, orb yeah. Good you then. Who has the Does other anything one? anything happen? Uh, Sargo. Sargo. Okay, nothing happens when you put the first one in. On the, the other side of this door are two creatures. Pay them the utmost respect. So, so don't try to pet them either, then. Yeah, refrain from petting anything but yourself, Musculon. And it's just a snaily. We have all sorts of cave snails back at the door of Impetin Zeus. What if they um, nuzzle you? Oh, can we can we make it that fasted beings, the uh, creatures, beings sure. would have been better. Beings, yeah. sure. Beings. So as you put the second one in, um, the door, uh, the the lock spins, uh, begins to spin, mm. and the door uh, retracts upward. And in here, you see two quaddles. Quaddles, quaddles. Quaddle, oh, quaddle, 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 quaddle. I made you quaddles. out of clay. Um, and as, as you enter, uh, they're kind of, you no, know, they're flying snakes. And so... As you enter, uh, they seem to kind of bow, um, and then one grabs the other's tail, and then you know they both grab each other's tail, and they begin kind of spinning um, at like in in the room. Um, I guess we just off our hats at them, right back at them, and uh, yep. going. Yep. Bow and walk forward. Ask someone to stare at them in awe. He's gonna linger. Sure, in their is there anything important? Uh, is there, no. Fra Copyright from Frask's protection. knowledge of religion, is there anything he could do that would show a sign of respect and reverence towards them? Feed them a mouse. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. Like, should I look up some Quaddle trivia real fact? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he would. He rolled a nat 20, so I'm sure there is like something you could say, some blessing, um, but I don't know what it is. You can you can just say like you offer your you know some primordial thing, um, bless you. But they seem to be non-aggressive to you. Okay, then uh, what's this door in front of us then? It's just a door. That is closed. I mean, yep. Can't have a handle. No. You you imagine you would push it. Okay. Well, I will imagine that I push it and then. <laughs> As you uh, open the door, you see in this room on the left-hand side, an earth elemental, on the right-hand side, a water elemental. Um, and in the middle, on a pedestal, there are uh, there is uh, a golden plate kind of oversized, right? Like, think of, like, legal paper. And on That's the golden the plate. plate are small etchings and the etchings are all across the plate right like in tiny lettering and it's just like you know, front and back it's uh lizard writing again it's not no dramatic. it's uh it's <laughs> not dramatic. it's in oh. common oh well then what does it say uh it's describing a code of laws it basically just, says like you yeah. know these hereby shall be the laws uh you know by the citizens of you know all this yada 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 so it's the codex it's the codex hmm. um can we take voice... <laughs> a, uh. a voice responds not coming from either elemental um it's a it's a low gravelly vo gravelly voice it seems to reverberate through the dungeon itself um like it's coming out of like the floor and ceiling at once and says, I'm curious what you'll do with it. Yeah, me too. Uh, probably read it first. <laughs> will you give it to your dragon or will you give it to your king? Well, it's not my king. That's for damn sure. Damn it. Can we just get a dragon turtle? Those guys both kind of suck. You should make your or, choice. Or is Blaine going to do something absolutely no one can predict? I mean, <laughs> let's, we could something. give this golden plate to the dragon turtle. Uh, hopefully he'll stop his, his hiatus and kill a fucking black or green dragon. It's one um, It's one it'd be, tap. It'd be a, it is. It's the thought that counts. No, no, I'm just saying, John, it's one tablet, right? It's one tablet, yep. All right, Ross uh, wants to ask the boys something. Read it. 
All right, Frask, what's up? Um, Frask wants to ask, like, what do you desire that we do? Not everything can exist in equilibrium. You must make a choice. Okay, I'm going to read it. Okay. It's a code of laws. Yeah. Do I see anything stand out? Like, the line um, of is determined by the guy that owns the most chickens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's this is old school stuff. This is stuff from like civilizations before, right? This is like you know uh, the you know the king's you know firstborn son. If if there aren't any firstborn sons, then like the head of the noble house. If there aren't any head of the noble houses, like you can elect to have trial by combat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just a lot of really arcane so stuff. These these snakes were the deities of law before they fell apart, and what became. Uh, lawful evil and the other became lawful good basically so to uh, so that's like this could be like the artifact of law if so whoever we give it to would have a lot of power over what it means uh for something to be lawful in the cosmos is there anything in the context of that document that says about uh is it appropriate to uh, to move a uh, the codex? <laughs> Are we breaking um, any laws by by like taking the codex to a different place? I I don't think so. Giving it a, a scan, Frask Frask may be thinking about it too a, a little too deeply. He, you're right about the the, the quaddles and, and the law, but this doesn't seem to be a kind of cosmic law. This seems okay. this seems to be a little more designed. Like okay. also in law? Uh, like a law for man, right? Like how a, a society should conduct itself. Does anybody here have paper? Oh, always. Do you have charcoal? You kidding? This isn't even the first rubbing I've taken today. I was just <laughs> But but the codex, the best morning. thing we can do is to not to not jostle it, to leave it where it is, and try to get rubbing off it. I mean, they're offering it to us. They, they're just yes. trying to figure out what we're going to do with it. Whoever I mean, controls I, the codex could control what like lawful societies of men must do or something. It could be a pretty hefty. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, he Helen, can you identify what this thing is? It's the codex. What do you mean, man? I mean, with fancily. Yeah. I mean, I have a feeling if I cast that spell, I'm going to find out that it's the Codex. It's full of laws and shit. Uh, I mean, does it have any more magical powers beyond just being a golden plate that inscribes? All right, you're forcing me to use my... Yes, <laughs> yes we are. You're not going to use it for combat. This royal you, are, you are the sage of knowledge. We want to <laughs> use, use that big old brain. Just... One of you fuckers, just a minute ago, three of you fuckers, just a minute ago, all right. Um, you just fake it. Okay. Uh, Helen, it's the codex. Fuck it. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. That's it. it. really should have taken him into the sidebar for that. It is magical. You yeah. don't really know how yet. That'll become clear momentarily, hopefully. I mean, that's, kind of that's, that's the law point. that's like, <laughs> Helen owns everything. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, but no, there's this this incorporeal voice has uh, has solicited you to make a choice. What was that question again? Will you give How it to your dragon, it? or will you give it to your king? Have we is picked up vibes that? of the king as a good guy, or the king is no. just like, eh. no? He he may be. I we mean, honestly, sir, he's a servant of the um, Ort, the god that. Is also causing the plague in. So, yeah. So neither is a good we, option. Oh no! Primus could just get within sixty feet of this guy and just like absorb him. Oh. Yeah, and Artaxis also uh, sucks shit. Artaxis. So I. That's the dragon. Uh, I, oh, Artaxis. I would be inclined to give it to neither of those. Yeah. Agreed. Jax. Yeah. Um, do you say this? So no. we, I, I need, yeah. I need a unified, a unified decision from the party. Yeah, yeah. Like Helen, agree. Yeah. Neither. 
Helen's chaotic, so I don't know if his lawful decision should go to someone. Our bar could give itself a perpetual liquor license with this. Yeah. I don't, they're not my king. And, no, no, no. Uh, you know, I don't want to be eaten by a dragon, but, you know, we can just kind of wait that out until he comes around, too. You know, lawful Bars override <laughs> eminent domain, period. I'm a little conflicted about technically going back on my word to give the codex to a dragon. All right. It's also oh, it's a very risky decision. The, vo the voice reverberating through the dungeon gives a hearty, deep laugh. And as the laugh shakes, reverberates through the room a little bit, both elementals become hostile and everybody's roll initiative. Okay. Wait, did we answer? Did we answer? What was our answer? Choose Neither. poorly. Neither. <laughs> oh. I guess right, if you're kind of binary fellas, what with the cave? Two of the people. Wait, was this place not really a sample for good? Was that a trick the whole time? <laughs> I mean, it's just a binary temple. Not a to be, trick. Not to be clear, uh, are the Quetzalcoatls are the Quetzalcoatls hostile now? The Quetzalcoatls are not hostile. Oh, the good. Good for hostile. them. Why do I always roll higher on my second initiative, causing for you to not have to do any shenanigans? <laughs> All right, the door is still open. Hi. The door is still open. Oh, you, right. you ain't getting run, boys. Okay, so we're we're right here. Inside. can we can we take a quick break before we have a long period of combat here? Because these are two big boy elementals here. Well, we're not going to run away from these two. Where? Where? The door, know, we don't have a door yet. Us? That's that's yeah, the door. main thing. I was waiting for that. There's a door behind us, but it doesn't lead back to another place we can leave. I would say these are large elementals, and they probably couldn't fit through that doorway except for the water one. <laughs> they could if they hunched. <laughs> except for half of the. <laughs> half them. Also, it take they a also while. well, the, things, a the, the, the earth one can literally burrow yes, at like yeah, its base can. speed through stone. But, so. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, we just go over here to like where the chasm is and just hope that he burrows himself into a bottomless pit. <laughs> we are on break. Quick break. Uh, break. Run to the roper! Run to the roper! I don't need to see Oh, yeah, push him into hell. Yeah, all right. Be back soon.
All right, welcome back. Uh, our players have just made their choice, which was no choice, meaning that they infuriated whatever spirit thing um, is haunting this place. Animated two elementals to attack them. I do need Musket Lawn to roll initiative, but after that, it'll be done. Sorgo, did you? Yeah, click. Did you click your dude? I you didn't click. It showed my stat. Oh, I think what? What? Oh, I've got the wrong tooltip up. Sorry, I'm painting on myself. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> I, I tried. I'm just <laughs> 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 All right. I feel a little spotty. Okay. Uh, what's your dex modifier? I believe it's better than that. Uh, uh, before we go on, like um, small thing yeah. I forgot to mention in the recap. Blake's afraid of earth elementals. No, uh, Musket Lawn had a telepathic conversation with Balthazar. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Oh, right, yeah, we, we solved the problem. Uh, does that sound like the voice that he heard? No. No. Okay. That, no. That's what I want to know. That's the main thing. Yeah. But do you? That's but then that, that's that's a that's a very important conversation. Do you remember what Balshazar told you? He the, tells the, the, the yeah. The hell spot had moved, which yeah. means that we ain't. Yeah, we completed the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Sweet. Um. Anyhow, Don Sorgo. There are two elementals barreling oh. down on top of you. Uh, I'll barrel right back at them. Um, mm, mm, mm. So, I will attack them with my radiant rapier is a magical weapon, right? It counts for yes. magical yep. slashing and piercing and whatever. Sure. Okay, I will attack. Yeah. Go wow, ahead. That, that's a hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are we still <laughs> blessed by Helen? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, no. Is oh, it in a minute? Yeah. If it was a minute, probably yeah. no. I still, I still had that on. Take the minus the d4, but I'm a 24 sure that. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, 13 damage to the elemental, and I'm also gonna go ahead and do the second level smite on him. Ooh, oh, um, busting out the big guns. I haven't fought anything else, I might as well for the for the good elemental, too. Basically, you got him. Sorry, hold on. Are you consider the water elemental the good of oh, the good? Yeah. The good, bad, and the ugly? I thought the water elemental was the bad. But... Yeah. No, wait, the earth elemental was the bad, yeah. Oh my gosh, your, your smite rolls are amazing. I'm doing really well with those. Okay, yeah, yeah. 17 damage. Yeah, sure. That's. Ugh. Ugh. That's not minor. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you. Uh, you. No, it's it, it, the, the water elemental sizzles and pops at this as you smite it. Um. Yeah, like the the you've created a steam vent with your rapier. It's impressive to see. Um. You know what? Else? <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm going to try, and then actually, no, I probably can't do that because that's no wait. I can see. Can I do that as a bonus action? I would have had to do that before, would not I? Don't. You'd have to look me a raptor smite. I sorry. I was trying to. I didn't mean to actually roll it. Wrathful mm -hmm. smite. I feel like I've already started my attack and I shouldn't be able to do this. One so do bonus turn. action. So these are spells, correct? You can only cast one spell per turn. I don't think I don't smite, think smites smite are not smite spells. Spell. Uh, that's not also not true. You can smite not uh, spells. It uses a spell slot, but it's not a spell. Yeah, okay. but I don't get you a bonus action in the middle of attack. Uh, no, you can do your bonus action before you detect, but you have already mm -hmm. attacked. No, I'll do it next turn. I'll do it next turn. Okay. Well, I'll just roll attack again. Well, you can also cast it now if you wanted, but that wouldn't. Yeah, yeah it is. You, you can, you can, you can, smack, you can use attack. it. Yeah. Well, this this wouldn't have hit anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Oh yeah, you could do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Um, oops, I rolled your damage for you, which I didn't mean to. So, yeah, okay, that doesn't hit. Um, Blake. Huzzah, bitches. Um, <laughs> Blake's bam. battle cry. Put it on a t-shirt. That's a hit. <laughs> bam, let's, do, let, let's, uh, let's see how good your con is. 
Uh, we'll stank strike. Roll me a con save. That's you, John. I yeah. know. Oh, that ain't gonna do it. It's not gonna do it. Okay. It's like, I don't know what the DC is, but. That's, that's not, not it. Not 12. Not it. All God, right. Fucking plus five, too. Oh, so worth it. Um, my God, I still got so much. Okay. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna move five feet because of uh, the drunken technique. Yeah, yeah. Let's just throw in a flurry of blows then. I think I'm using. Uh, hmm. Let me think. Wait. Attack. Bonus extra attack. Extra attack. Let's use the extra attack first. Yes. Conserve them, them key points. That is not good enough. Uh, nope, that's then, not good we enough. Will, then we will use the Valeria blows Boop. to distract one, or subtract one key point to do two attacks, Uno and Dos, as they are adequately <laughs> named for their terrible rolls. Yep. Well, um, those are awful and don't hit. Um. <laughs> 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 I would ask you. you know, does are elven for one and two? I would ask you. <laughs> does uh, does if I were to add plus two to that, would it hit? No. For the water elemental. Those are shitty rolls. That's why I'm attacking right now. You're attacking the water elemental. Uh, I attacked the earth elemental. Then I moved over here to attack the water elemental because the earth elemental stunned until the okay. end of the next turn. Yeah. Um. So I've been attacking the water elemental. Do you My add a is, plus two to your hit? I can. That's that's my question. I'm not going to betray more information. You can either do it or not. Mm, mm, mm. A lot of the Tasha's things say like you only use up the resource if you change uh, it. Been one key point to roll to. Mm. I mean, I got I got key points to burn. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I'm gonna burn a key point. I'm gonna use focus aim. And I'm gonna add a plus two to my twelve. Okay. The uh, fourteen does hit? hit the water. Element. Oh fuck yeah! Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it, I don't know if it worked differently. Uh, so here's some fun damage. And a sang strike. Subtract one key point. And roll me that damage. <laughs> so roll me that con check. I oh, wait, no, this no, is the like, second oh. serpent themed temple that we've entered. I'm trying to John. keep it balanced, guys. Oh, wait, hold on. Is that enough? Uh, shit. What's my? It's. Uh, how do I get my DC? It's, what, it's eight plus proficiency plus your wisdom. So eight plus three is eleven. Plus wisdom is three. That's fourteen. That's 14. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. My. I think that'll that will end my turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Muscalon, your turn. All righty then. Guys, uh, he's gonna murder me one of these sessions. Just no, out of spite. He's already tried. Mhm. Mm this is fine. Nothing to see here. Uh, let's do. Where is it? Uh. Where's my thingy? I mean, how many key points did you? All right. Three. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah only right. three. I could do that again next round. Honestly, without, uh, I mean, if I hit the first two times, I could. 10 foot us. radius. No, wait, hold on. Uh, dang strike, focus aim. And this thingy that blows. That's going okay, right I on that bad boy. Four and seconds. I, I will do a, two. I will do an arcane firearm enhanced. Sh -sh -sh shatter. Shadoobe. Nice. Love it. You hit all your friends too? No, just the 10 foot radius on this asshole. And he has disadvantage on the saving roll because he's made a rock. On which asshole? And the the stone golem. Okay. He, uh, yeah, so. I guess here, the, uh, 38 thunder damage. Uh, so it has to be a point. On saving roll, but it's on. 
It has I, to be a point you can see. I can't see over the. I mean, I think you could pedestal? probably. You should hit here, right? I'm assuming if I can read the pedestal, I can see to the giant fucking giant. <laughs> you could like shoot between his legs and hit the corner over here, and then... it's ten feet. Also down below radius, though, right? Yeah. So... Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah if, you hit, radius, if you, if right you hit on the, the corner, then, it's yeah. a token. Yeah. yeah it's okay. like a classic, uh, you know, like a, mm -hmm. in a TV show when you shoot someone and they're like, "Ha ha, you missed!" And they're like, "Did I?" And it explodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So roll me that. Roll me that damage, and I believe it. It's already rolled as part of the thing, right? Yeah, the uh, eleven thunder. Oh, it's just sorry, it's, yeah, you like just that. have disadvantage on the saving throw because uh, you're made of rocks. All right. Also, because you're stunned. Yep. Con save. Okay. I forgot about that. So everybody gets advantage on their attacks, right? When they're stunned? It's not going to do it, right? No. No, I have 15. Okay. Oh, 11. No, he's level 6. No. All right. Um, all right. He'll, he's going to take I, damage. I'm going to delete all these things here. Sorry. So your, your shatter goes off. All right in the corner of the room reverberates like sending shockwaves through the room mm -hmm. uh the earth elemental is stunned i don't believe he can do anything take damage nope mm -hmm. uh, the water elemental is stunned he cannot do anything all right nice what i will say is helen on your turn what you saw is that when the shockwave went off in the corner of the room you saw it reverberate through the earth elemental, but also through the water elemental. Hmm. I think they're linked, guys. I'm glad I stunned them both. It'll That's be two funny. stuns, right? Yeah. That's double stun. Till <laughs> the end of my next next turn. Okay. Um. So. I think the best thing I can do. I don't know. Should I? Do you guys want blessings or should I? Should I attack? I, I, mean, I mean, you got until the end of my next turn, so it's fine. It's yeah, all gravy. I'm bless Blake, Don Sorgo, and Graffiti. Um, and I. Uh, is uh, snatching the codex a bonus action? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take the codex. Okay, snatch. Classic. Is there a way to mark bless on your sheet, particularly? Not really, right? Just gotta remember. Uh, you just add a D4 when you roll an attack. Add, there's a okay. section for global attack modifier and global save modifier. You may have to like enable them in settings. You can throw, you can throw a bless in there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you can also yeah, just. I, I did exactly four. that. It was Blake, Don Sorgo, and who? Uh, Musculon. Musculon. All right, and okay. then um, I am going to move here. Got it. All right, that makes it Frask's Just turn. Let me move. All right, Frask is going to do something uh, pretty epic. He's going to run up to here, and he's going to throw a pinch of the dust of dryness at the water elemental. <laughs> All right, link me your... Uh... Link me that item. Alright. Uh, all Dust right. of Ben Shapiro's wife. So I just copied and pasted <laughs> that from uh, so the funny. website, roll20.net, actually. So. Oh my god. That's an insane amount of damage. It's very specific for this uh, situation. Wow. So yeah. it's. Uh, you oh. Get to make oh my god, you failed! Yes. <laughs> all right, Do I roll, roll the damage? 10, roll me 10 10d6 damage. I'm going to have to roll oh twice. God. Wow. Double T beads for the win. He already took like. Ah, uh, not the best rolls. Very low. Seven damage. Very low rolls. 21 yeah, well, damage. Were, 21, 21 necrotic four damage. Ones. <laughs> I wasted a pinch of dryness. Yeah, on that. that's that's an awful roll. No, but Not this like one six or one, five, or one one four. Yeah. So you see, you see, yeah, that's a 
You, that's that. So that's that's a bad roll. Um, Here's what I want to know: Does a does a bead roll away from it after? Does it like form into the bead and then fall off of it so that I can pick up and get some water? Yes, it does. So you Excellent. you do get the water. Um, what right. I will say is that it has a strange effect because the damage you do to the water elemental seems to be both lessened and mirror mirrored on the earth elemental. Mm, muddy water. The muddy water, yeah. <laughs> Does it shrink the size of the water elemental? Uh, no. Uh. <laughs> Don't sorry, go. Right. Um, oh, that's so. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I just want to point out that was an incredible move. I you just did two fireballs worth of damage to <laughs> this water elemental. With a bad roll, like with, with a, bad a really roll. bad roll, yeah. Wow. Um, just the right tool for the job. How many pinches do you have left? One pinch. I've used. I've used like most Three. of it. Yeah, I've got okay. one pinch. You have left. one pinch left. Okay. Don't so, go. This is the um, most efficient use of it. Because I'm going to ball. do. Yeah. So I'm going to do my bonus action to cast Wrathful Smite, and then I'm going to try and hit the water elemental again. All right. Um, I think it's at advantage. It's at advantage because it's stunned. Yeah. You can also add D a D4 blessed. to it. Yeah, I got bless in there already. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I think we get it. Um, so I will Jesus. give an extra a uh, little bit of psychic damage, but let me link that in. I think he's got to make a save. He's got to make a wisdom save, or he's frightened of me. <laughs> he he should be. <laughs> but he's <No>. not. <laughs> so he's going to take five damage? A whole um, five. You know, I'm going to smite him too, what the hell. <laughs> Can you add smite on smite? Yeah, one uh, spell. Wrathful smite oh, okay. is a spell, and then smite is a spite. A smite. It's, it's just, yeah. Is wait, is smite a reaction? No, it's or just a it... thing I can add. Okay. I don't think it's a reaction. I, I forget. It's, it's been, a decision. It's been like two years since I played a paladin, and I clicked something. So it's we'll a gun blade, and you're just deciding whether to pull the trigger when you, when you pull the trigger. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, another eight damage. Yeah. All right, so you yes. uh, you, you strike it, um, and again, it seems to be the monk and the paladin up front with uh, Frask throwing, uh, like extracting <laughs> magical water bits out of this uh, poor, <laughs> poor water elemental. Uh, Blake, it's you. John, I tried to uh, delete back. my dots and I deleted myself. You can you? Uh... Yep, yep. And and I get advantage on this, right? <laughs> uh, yes, you get advantage. Okay, we'll, we'll do one. Hope one of us will hit. Don't forget your bless. Uh, I need remember. to roll my second attack. Uh, does oh, you can damage? roll your second attack. Yes, can I, right, can I real quick roll my second attack? Yes, yeah, you can roll your Hold second attack. Hold on, Sorgo's turn. Musculon, what was your what was your uh, initiative? Good. Uh, 16-ish. That's a better yeah, roll. That's yeah. a good roll. Oh, up here. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah that's 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 a, great. All right. All right. I don't even think I actually rolled my attack for my first one. So, okay. yep. A six. Uh, right, so who are you, which elemental are you hitting, Blaine? Wait. Uh, well, Don Sorgo went before me, so... He hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I just I'm, atta I'm attacking a water elemental. Okay. First. Water elemental, so that hits. Um, and then I will spend one key point. And you sign strike. Let's see them con, con saves. That's a pretty good con save. I'm not going to lie. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Second one. Oh, I've seen better. He's still stunned, so. Is it hit? Yep. Uh, let's see what. It's season one is really good, but. D uh, does I guess he wouldn't get disadvantage on a con on a no. saving throw, would he? Nope. Unless. I would imagine if it was a deck save, he probably would, right? Probably, but I'd have to look that, it up. That's yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Stunned. Um. But you that was the fact that like nothing does except monk almost. Uh, so that's a nice solid. Yes. Damage. Sorry, no. The creature automatically fails strength and dex saving throw. Mm. Damn. If only these were strength and dex saving. 
Well, yeah. I can only stun one of them, so what do you guys think? Stun the ugly one! As stun. Blake is- as, as Blake is holding up two fists like, eh? Eh? Which one should the I hit? Boy, I guess. The what? The water one? The water boy. The water boy? Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go, um... Standing strike on, on the water elemental. See if he has what it takes. Oh! Still stuff. Classic. Classic. How much uh, you crit to fail. Zero. So but that's it, huh? I have a bonus action for one more attack, but that's it. Bazinga. Is that to hit which one? Yeah, uh, the water it's elemental. The water okay. elemental. It's done. So, totaling up to uh, 8 plus 6 plus uh, 5 plus 5. Right, or 6. It's uh, 19 damage, yeah. I'll take it. Of magical fisticuffs. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, This makes it musket box turn. Alright. Uh... We drop the wee little cannon, and he plops down here, cute little lad. Mm. Give I me wanted, I wanted cannon to token. Ask, uh, sorry to interrupt you, um, Pete. Again. The stun. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, does not, it, it does not apply to both creatures. That's what I want to know. But the damage, yeah. it seems like, reverberates between both. Yes. Yeah, okay. they've got like a life link. Yeah. Life link, but not a stun link. Got it. Yes. Yeah, nobody Suddenly. would cast a link. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'll give you your cannon in a second. Drop me my force ballista, and I will fire upon uh, Big Rocky here with uh, um, uh, 2d8 force. You should fire force. on the stunned one. To get a badge? Yeah. The water one's stunned. Yep. Uh, and assuming that they're linked, just... Okay. Yeah, destroy both them. Just killing the right. water. Then yeah, sure. I'll shoot water boy. Don't really care. Um, so two d eight force damage. Uh, yeah, you need to make a ranged spell attack. No, I don't. This is an ability. Force plus the colon. Make a ranged spell attack. Originating yeah. from the can. Yeah. Make a ranged spell attack. So yeah, roll me an attack. At an advantage. If With you're advantage. Hitting the, uh, yep. Okay, so. How do I do a default spell attack? Just uh, if you if you go to your your spell page, the top center should have a spell attack or should I'll have a DC spell attack bonus. DC, can you roll that? Just fifteen. I mean, it's just okay. A well, number. right to the, next to that spell attack. Okay. So D twenty plus that. Yeah, I mean that's what okay. it says. Yeah, oh, okay. So manually doing that. All right. D20. Spell attack bonus is seven. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, what, 8 plus proficiency plus int bonus? Yeah, I think so. Okay. No? All right. Nine. Does not hit. Remarkably <laughs> bad. Oh, wait, no, you, you Remarkably bad. Roll, it's advantage, so do it twice. Oh, oh he does roll. It. Yeah, correct. Still bad, but maybe okay. Oh. 13 does not hit. Oh. Okay. 14 would, though. <laughs> oh, oh, and I have a uh, bless. Oh, you do have Bless, plus oh. one before. Well, that automatically People, hits. Uh, yeah. Plus yeah. one. <laughs> All right. It's making my blessings worth it, guys. Yeah, I didn't realize you were blessed because you had deleted your token and didn't have the Bless on. So. Didn't have the... Is Georgia... Georgia little the... That means yeah, it's a little vagina there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, 2d8 force damage. Oh, I need to roll the damage then too, don't I? Uh, bollocks. I should just invent a thing for this. I will do that in the future. And there. 2d8. <laughs> eight and Great. five. Great. Yeah. Eight and five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you. Okay. So what? Uh, your cannon fires a force plus a shot straight into this uh, water elemental. It takes, you know. It's a it's it's a big target. It's a stationary target. Somehow your force plus still fucks up, but the blessing from um, uh, Helen, you know, allows you to connect. So mm -hmm. what did you do? Pushed, and it is pushed five feet back into the wall. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. Oh, does that shunt it? No. <laughs> so if I stand here, I can still see them both, right? Uh. 
Yes. All right, then I'll move that little bit, and I'm done. Okay. It is the I mean, Earth Elemental, which the DM finally gets to make an attack. Holy shit. Blaine. It's just the monster of the week where you never get to roll. Do either of those hit? Ah, uh, you're muted. I imagine they don't. <laughs> yeah, they don't hit. Yeah. Sorry. Great. No, it's fine. Uh, the water elemental is stunned. Helen. Yeah. He, uh, he, he dips okay. and leaves. I'm already concentrating, and nobody's been hit. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm This will not DM, last forever, the, okay? The DM has been rolling like shite. I rolled an 8 and a 7, so... To be very clear, this will not last forever. This lasts like... Less than a round. Oh, we did. Let's fuck him up. Please. Well, All right. So, uh, uh, wisdom on who? Saving. Th Actually, hold on, hold on, because if uh, if the other if, if uh, sacred flame is uh, a deck saving throw, I'm gonna cast sacred flame because the uh, water elemental automatically fails his deck save. It uh, does. I will roll two d8 damage. Wow, guys, we did it. <laughs> we, we did it, everyone. Did it. <laughs> there's yep. a simmering. <laughs> there's, there's a, uh, yeah, there's a simmering. There's a. Wow. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a boil. So sacred. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, wow. Okay, sorry. To be clear, I move in to, to, to see the water multiple that I move back. Yep. Yeah, no, I got it. All right, yeah. Fresk. Fucking hell. All right. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to use my last pinch of dust of dryness on this thing. Okay. Yeah. So same same Oof. thing. You roll a DC 13 constitution save. Oh. I think that uh, he takes half, half damage, right? Takes half damage. So okay. So roll just high. Five, five D6. Roll I might do more damage than last time. So you can roll yeah, all at once if you go into the custom roller. Neil. Oh, that's yeah, so that's only six. Better. Only six damage. Sure. Uh, okay. No, you have another. Oh, no, you, oh, no you that's right. No, it is twelve. You roll ten. Oh no, I roll. I roll all ten. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah you roll all ten, and I have it. Yeah. yeah that's you don't right. Have the dice. Look at those six. That's the first six okay. I've seen. <laughs> twelve. I mean, My it would be God. literally the same thing, but yes. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm glad you rolled it anyways. Wow, but still, like the most amount of damage in one shot. Like that's like, oh, these ele uh, these elementals are looking pretty rough at this point. Um, at some point, they'll hit us. At some point, they will hit somebody. I don't think they will. Uh, all right. DM's frustrations aside, Dunce <laughs> Um, Well, I'm just going to keep doing my thing here. Try it later, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's still stunned. If it works once. He is still stunned if you're okay. hitting the water elemental, so. Yeah. Yeah. Back in there. And we will do that again. That does hit. Fifteen does hit. hit. 15 yeah. does hit. Yep. And what the hell? I'll smite him one more time. I think I've still got one left. Two left. All right. Uh, where is the smite? Do we get any extra uh, experience for embarrassing you, John? Uh, hmm. no. In fact, it, it detracts from the, the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Okay. I try to make balanced encounters. You know, like, Cobalt Fight Club is like, this will kill your players. I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> My players will fucking survive that and murder me. Fuck that. Yep. Like, I, I need to add, like, 35 gnolls to the adventure, and they'll still probably beat them. Yeah, Fuck I need that. the quaddles to come in and mess with you. <laughs> All right. Blake. Oh, hey, what's up? Your turn. Um, yeah. I believe it's the end of your turn when the water Yes, it's the up. end of his turn. Yeah, yes. so he is still at a disadvantage. So you can still crazy go nuts on the water So element. bloops. That, I think that'll hit. It does. For that much. I can hit him again. Seven extra attack. That'll also hit. And then I think the only thing I can do, because I, I am keyless at this point, uh, minus the one button the door. I can just use my bonus attack 
not the dart. Sorry. <laughs> it's right next to it. Okay, yeah. the 14, I think, still does hit, though. It does. And, oh, fuck, that baby's crying. I um, need to go to a key party to recover. <laughs> oh, Damn, yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. little um, baby. Oh. Yeah, so All it's right. 21. Baby's first Christmas. 21 okay. fisticuffs. Yep. Yep. They've taken the damage. Oof. Woofs of woofs of. Okay. Um, Musket lung. I don't. Do you want to move? Do you want to take some attacks? Who? Who me? You, Blake. Uh, I didn't do flurry of blows right. Um. You know. You did. You did. You did use flurry of blows. No, I didn't. One, two. I see three unarmed strikes. It's it's That's attack, not extra blows. attack and bonus attack. That's it. Monk, if you Flo if you use, your blows would have been two additional attacks. If you attack on your action, you can use your bonus action to do another unarmed yes. attack. So Monk, features. yeah, but he can't use his bonus action to step at the window or anything like that. No, no, I can't. Okay, so he will take he opportunity attacks. If oh, okay. I mean, right. let me check my drunken technique because it does not. Um, it requires that I do a flurry of blows. Um, mm -hmm. It does require that I do a flurry of blows. So. No, I will not be able to like jib jab out of this situation. <laughs> um, although, although he is stunned, so he's stunned. You know the I, I, will, I, I will take an opportunity attack just to move, like, uh, over here. Yeah, go All for right. it. He's, he's gonna hit you. Yeah, go for it. Hurrah! Not oh. enough. One one day. Swing One day, and a eight. miss Earth Elemental. I, you, John. <laughs> I, I like to think that, that Blake is running away just like shaking his finger like, no, no, no. All right. Sorry. Musket long. All right. Uh, well, ooh, well, if you're going to clear out, I got another spell slot and I ain't afraid to use it. Shadube. Right in the hey, middle yo. of the gap here. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. A package is in transit. Middle of the yeah. spot there, so yeah. 10 minute radius hits them you both. Uh, you know, back enough that it won't hit Sorgo. Sh -sh -sh shatter. Yeah. Okay. That's fast. That's not bad. That'll do. So, yeah, disadvantage on the Rocky and the other one's uh, straight roll, I presume. So, Earth Elemental has disadvantage to shatter. 11 and then oh uh well wait does the watermelon elemental get this badge on Shatter? only if it's shared by you know no. whatever magic bullshit john's got going on but it's, but... it's oh, still okay. failed so yeah. okay oh yeah but the earth elemental okay all right so it rolled so first then or i'm confused what who rolled, who rolled okay water earth earth okay gotcha yeah. okay yeah. so earth earth made it though okay yeah earth made it all right. Well, so, on a save, what happens? I think it's going to be around. Um, yeah. Yeah, Shatter sucks because I'm really yeah, not successful. Yeah. On a save, nothing happened. <laughs> Why is the yeah. turn no. order weird? Does or half as much damage on a successful save. Oh, really? Yeah. Token. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so 20, 20 and 10, 22, Rocky, 10 to water. Okay. Finally. Oh, wait, no, 10 to, 10 to Rocky because he passed. I'm sorry. Okay, 10 to Rocky. Yeah. Okay. 10 to Rocky, 20 to water. My bad. I forgot which ones we rolled there. All right, and then. Okay. And then. Yeah. Uh, the, oh. the cannibal fire. Okay. Uh, it's, do, I mean, they all look basically the same still, right? I can't see any observable. Correct. Behavioral things. All right, then I'm going to. Neither are stunned or disadvantaged in any way. Nope. Bloody. All right, then I'll shoot yeah. Rocky because. Absolutely bloody. I will okay. rock him. Uh, to take away the advantage. Uh, 26. Definitely have them. I, yeah, so that's the first roll. Okay, we'll count that. Okay. Uh, take away, leave off that one, only the two at eight. I forgot to take off my check card. All right, yeah. That's a terrible roll. All right, but it's for five more. But it does hit. It's free, it's found money. You're a boy, you'll be a man. And does, it's found money. Jesus. They're finally going to be able to do something. Um... The Earth Elemental is going to. Oh no! I can leave. <laughs> Fuck this shit out. 
Yeah, I'm gonna bend the rules just a little bit, and it's Please. going to go through the <laughs> literally walk straight through the wall onto the other side of Helen and Musket Lawn, um, and it's gonna give each of you an attack. Rude. Ooh, now you're Hel rolling high. Helen, oh, is yeah. it mad about the three damage I did? Helen and Musket Lawn in that order. <laughs> Helen. Oof. Musket Lawn. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Good news, Helen. Right. Good Which deal. One? A 27 hits me. I don't need to check my AC. All it's right. 15 to Helen and... Ooh. 34 to Musket Lawn? 34 to Musket Lawn. What's the damage? Okay. Poisoning? Okay, nothing special. Uh, I feel a lot prouder of my misses. <laughs> Those kind Ten of saves me. for um, uh, concentration, right? Uh, against fifteen, yes. Good job. All right. Well, I'm just gonna eat a bunch of damage then. The bless is out. Punch. Bless is still up. I'm still up. Do you need concentration to keep your artillery up, or does it just stay up? Uh, that was, a, he's that was addressed he's, to musket lawn. It's concentration. Is it concentration? For the what? For your Eldritch can. No, it's just out until it gets destroyed. Okay. Okay. And then the water elemental is Two. going to move into uh, Blake oh, and Frask's space. Nice try. And is going to use Whelm. So, make me a strength saving throw, both of you. Not with advantage, the first one. Six, I guess. That's not as good. Yeah, I mean, you can add a d4, but... Uh, I, you know what? Fuck it, I'll add it. Oh, I'll fucking add it. Ain't going to it. I mean, I imagine... DC 14, it says in the spell. Yep, but... Mm, rolled high on that crit. Crit that four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, It'll yeah. take it where we get it. Um, all right. 2d8 on failure. Uh, 2d8 plus four bludgeoning damage. Um, until the grapple ends, um, the target is restrained, unable to breathe. Fine. Okay. Yep. My okay. So great. that is 14 points of damage to Blake. Blake. Um, right. And Blake is now inside the water elemental. Um, Frask, if you can move yourself into the space of your choosing, which is not inside the water elemental. There you go. Okay. Much. Wait, so when you were doing saves, do you remember to add, I don't know, this matters. Do you remember to add plus three? Uh, for me? And my aura. Oh, shit! You know fucking a plus <laughs> three would probably fucking help. Uh, no, it wouldn't. It's 14. No, <laughs> That's exactly no, that. Now up to 13. Oh, shit. Yeah. The whole realization of this whole thing just was on you. Alright, Helen. There's uh, an earth damn. elemental just so down beautiful. on top of you. Yeah. I'm putting uh, that reminder, though. Plus three and 1d4. <laughs> That could have helped out, though. Okay. I am going to shift five feet to the east. Um, and then I am going to cast with my bonus action. Mass healing word. Uh, to heal both Musket Lawn and Blake. Where I believe are the other ones who've been injured, correct? Mm-hmm. So. Okay, and that's 1d4 plus my spellcasting modifier. I don't know why I can't just roll Switches. it. Switches. Fucking dude. Okay, let's... I mean, Musket Lawn really needs it a lot more than me. Yeah, all three. That's all I got. I think he has to split it, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. Seven for each of you. Thanks. Uh, and then I will cast... Toll the dead. There you go. On the rock guy. All right. Fourteen. Um, I don't think that's a this. I have fifteen, right? Yep. All right. Not gonna do it. Okay. So then that's what two d eight or two d twelve, right? D twelve because you're wounded. Yep. B B B. All right. Approximately average. There you go. All right. 
He takes it, and the water elemental takes it. All right. Wait, so I, wait. Um, I, took, I took damage, you said? What happened? Uh, no, Frask didn't take damage. Okay, I heard yeah, I, you're not You're not wounded, are you, Frask? Not yet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you're not young. Yeah, I was I was healing basically everybody, but it, that's just musket alone and Blake. Yeah, all, all right. the damage, folks. Frask. All right, Frask, it's you. All right, um, I'm going to uh, cast a spell. Um, it's a bonus action to cast. Flame blade. Um, Ooh. A and, fiery blade. Yeah, I evoke a fiery blade into my free hand. It is similar in size and shape to a scimitar, and it lasts for up to 10 minutes, but it's a concentration spell. If I let go of the blade, it'll disappear. It emits 10 foot radius of dim light. Uh, sorry, 10, 10 foot radius of light and dim light for another 10 feet. It does 3d6 uh, damage. It is a melee spell attack. All right. All right, so I'm going to attack with that. Uh, I have to actually just roll this manually. Uh, so d20 plus 7. That's 20 to hit. That, that's a hit. My right. hit. And then 3d6 fire damage. That's 10 fire damage, which should work. I'm so surprised that a water elemental does not have resistance to fire. But whatever. I guess the idea is we just make it steam out of it. Yeah. Like, then, yeah like they would, they, 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 they negate better. each other, you know, because they're, they're opposites. Fire is weak to water. Water is weak yep. to fire. Oh, it, take, mean, it takes full damage from that. So yes. I feel like there's right. an evolution where you go from a water like a ice elemental to a water elemental to a steam elemental to a plasma elemental. And then you're just a star. I don't know. That's what happened to me last week. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> How you feel now? <laughs> Very tired. Is that, that it for Frask? Frask? Oh, yeah. Frask? Yeah, you're <laughs> Is that it for Frask? All right. Okay. We'll move on to Thunsorger. <laughs> um... <laughs> I guess there's not much I can do for Blake except keep hitting this thing. How does it look? Bad. They look bad. They're in, right. they're in a bad way. They're funny. You can play on right. him. Yeah. Um, I mean, keep attacking. Oh, you, you don't uh, have an I, I don't think you have an advantage, but 19. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just do the first one. Okay, for so. Huzzah. What, do, what is the. Oh, you're blessed. And you said blessed oh, was still up. Ugh, yes, it is. Um, <laughs> so, yes, your 19 will hit. For that, okay. Let's try that again. That will, yes, that will <laughs> hit. Oof. Okay. Okay. Damage. I'm not gonna smite this time because I'm gonna. These guys have a lot of HP. Uh, uh, they sure help. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nope. Okay, so two strikes come in, uh, snicker snack on the uh, on the water elemental Blake. It's your turn. You are inside grapple. Yeah, you tell me what I need to do. You need to make me a uh, strength saving throw. Uh, yeah, I probably should have done this last time, but we're gonna see how this goes. Is that good enough? Plus three makes it fourteen. Escape DC is fourteen. Is? Because you're within his, uh... Wait, you already put the plus three in. Sorry. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. That's my strength. Uh, Your strength yeah, is plus three. Uh, yeah, that's no, that's awesome. my proficient. I'm proficient in strength. That's why. So it does not include Don Sorgo's aura. Uh, okay. All right. So your strength saving is... is okay, you're preserved. Yeah. Okay, got it. I so, realized last time I probably should use my inspiration because fucking I have it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, a 14 will actually get you out, but that would be your action. Oh, cool. This is full action. Yeah, that's yep. fine. Uh, so put yourself in a, in so a space that you're a, choosing. Do I still have a bonus action? Yes. Or movement? Yeah. You, and, and your movement. Um, correct me, Alex. Uh, can I use my bonus action to uh, to hit him? You have to attack on your action. Fuck me. Okay, um, then... You have to attack with a monk weapon on your action. Uh, yeah, but I should have that. Um, 
I don't think there's anything I could do. Um, yeah, fuck it. Okay, yeah, done. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't run. Right you here. Yeah, there you go. Fine. Yeah. I'm not gonna okay. invoke an attack opportunity because why? All right. Uh, uh they don't. Yeah. It'll it'll be musket lance turn. All right. Uh, let's see then. Uh, who wants a smackin'? They both do. That's the answer. Um, <laughs> we'll start off with uh, the cannon just lit lighting up, water boy. Uh, pow, pow. Uh, not off. That's a hit. To take off the plus one, it's just an 18, but yeah, it's a hit. Yep. Yeah. So, eight on water boy. All right. And then. Just one, two, two, eight. All right. Um. Uh, what I can do the radio. I think it's statistically possible for you to kill them this turn. Yeah. Uh, you might be able to. I think that's my best bet. All right. So then we'll do another arcane firearm. Target Rocky. Okay. Uh, what is the radius on this one again? Sorry, one second. Uh, 15 foot cube. So again, a cube that does not encompass me and, and or Helen, whatever. Uh, Con save. Thunder wave, level one, and it is a con save, yes. At disadvantage, okay, he fails. Uh, no disadvantage on this one, this is thunder wave, not... Oh, uh, uh, okay, all right, so 11 fails, I guess. Yeah, in either case, so. Uh, should be a 2d8 plus the extra roll, six, and yeah. 10 damage. Right. 10 damage. Okay. It's not enough. However, it is close. Okay. Um, the Earth Elemental does not take kindly to that um, and is going to slam each of you once again. Rude. I like how the. All right. Again, it's oh, man. Helen Musket. You're rolling so good. Helen Musketlon again. So 10 to Helen, 17 to Musketlon. Oof. Uh. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Um. Helen, are you conscious? Yeah. Okay. You did 15 the first time and uh. Concentration and... check, please. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. she took back the for sure, for like sure. 34 last time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you have 33 hit points. Oof. Oh. Blessed. Advantage? You guys ain't blessed. I mean, inspiration. If you don't need it. Uh, I got a bad news for you. I actually already rolled with advantage on accident, so that I can probably do it. <laughs> um, so, uh, the water elemental is going to double slam on Blake. Uh, does an 18 like, hit. I don't know. I think Somewhere. So. Uh, Does it blend? Amp Hold on. Uh, did, is Helen still blessed? Me? Nope. Uh, that d bless doesn't help with. No, and it doesn't help you. <laughs> Does Don Sorgos help me? No. You're too far. And it would. Am I? It, it is, would not is help. Is it anyways. ten or fifteen feet? It, 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 it doesn't increase. It doesn't increase AC. Okay. okay. It doesn't increase AC. Can you guys well, see fine. the? Did yes, one of them will hit. No, they can. They can see. Yeah. So it's eight bludgeoning damage to you. Uh, surviving. Muscle line, you're still up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has like 80. I'm a fucking dwarf, right? man. <laughs> uh, it'll be Helen's turn. Okay. Now, I'm gonna move you. Last turn, I must have already been wounded and just not healed myself because I didn't realize I was wounded. Did <laughs> you get hit by that thing? <laughs> He, yeah, he took a giant hit from that guy. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's just chalk that up to dipshittery. Uh, I'm gonna cast Masculine Word again. Alright. Uh, the healing word is bird. 
Bird's healing. We're bird, bird. Yeah, hell yeah. It's five a piece. Uh, so it's five for me. You get a five. And you. Muscalon and Blake, I believe, are really <laughs> the parties. Oh. And then I will cast Toll the Dead on the Earth Elemental. Dong. Okay. Uh. Dong. Is that wisdom? wisdom. Oh, that's that so wise. It's not it. It's uh, okay. Why won't you roll the damage, friendo? You take the damage. It's 2 right? It's 2 right? So how do you... Oh, yeah. Oh, I shake him to pieces. <laughs> yeah, we how do... We do this a lot. How do two elementals, uh, discorporate? Um, well, the earth elemental is very easy. The Toll the Dead shakes it to pieces. Um, the, el the water elemental is very confusing because it starts to to solidify and then shake into pieces. <laughs> yeah, they are linked. So the earth elemental and the uh, yeah. uh, the water elemental, um, you know, they start to like transfuse before they discorporate um, and they begin to exhibit some non-Newtonian physics, but then just kind and of like- they both turn into crushed ice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, that is that we are exiting combat. Huzzah. Well done, folks. Yay! Well done. We survived. Yeah, so now we're just trapped in the cave forever. We can go How Rover. many HP do you have left? I have to know. Who? Me? Yeah. 19 after that heal. Okay. Dude, I'm a tank. I mean, you got dwarves are broken, twice, but, but I think... Yeah, but yeah, dwarves are broken. Uh, Blake. <laughs> sure. What's up? Uh, are you standing where you're standing? Mm-hmm. On the pedestal, under sure. the codex, you Ooh. see uh, a deck of cards. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah. A whole deck? Codex with a CKS? You see cards. We have a uh, way to pass the time while we start. Ooh. Grab them. I'm going to grab them. Cards? Yeah, okay. Does it just like, open, like a little pop door open? And I'm like, ooh, cards. No, no, no. As in when Helen took, <laughs> well, essentially in combat, she took the codex. Under the mm -hmm. codex, there were cards. Oh, okay. So, like, it's still on the pedestal. What, yeah. What do they look like? Um, yeah. What uh, like? They are uh, oversized and ornate. Um, mm. And I'm here to tell you, you will not be able to take all of the cards. You will, however, be able to draw. Mm. Oh, no. If you choose. Um, uh, Helen? Uh huh. I think you know do more about cards than me. I do. Um, yeah, they look um, they look magical and they look ornate and it looks like you've used them before. They look like uh, tarot cards. Yeah. Well, you know, your fortune is only going to be told one way or another. Um, I draw one. Okay, I have. Props right oh, here. Um, oh. I actually ordered tarot cards, and they <laughs> did not. They did not get here in time because of Christmas. So, so I actually them. printed and cut, <laughs> cut, cut some out. Oh, um, I'm so happy about this. So I am you, yes, shuffling yes. now. This is exciting. Um, what I need you to it's do is just roll as me legit as the real ones. A d20. A d20. So all right, the deck, the deck, the the deck uh -huh. is set. Um. <laughs> Okay. All okay. right. Uh, Alex, you need to go over there and cut the deck. <laughs> <laughs> we both get COVID. I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> and reaches in from the edge of the camera. You open up, there's death. You're like, ah, fuck. Okay. And here's how this is going to work I will have the tarot cards in my possession. And I have your card here. I'm going to mail it to you. What? And we will address uh, this later. Do you think it's going to make it mail to my physical house? Yes, I'm going to mail you a tarot card. Is this an email thing? No, I'm or going to mail you a tarot else. card. Fuck <laughs> that, man. I should have I I drawn a card just to fuck with this 
Toasted? I mean, yeah, there's still a deck there. Spaz! Oh, is there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I will draw one as well. All right, roll me a d20. You're just supposed to give me the good one. That one, I, obviously. I'm... The best okay. one. I'm in two. I'm going to roll one. <laughs> yeah, everybody draw a card. Not okay. the only one that's going to be a lady and not draw a card. We're going to find out in 7 to 14 days if we all died. Or something. <laughs> By oh, the way, I'm, I I will likely be an hour late next week. He's going to increase it every time to see how long it takes. <laughs> all right. I'll and be Sargo off the, the two following weeks. Have, 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 the, have, the, week is... have the kid play. It'll be fine. Uh, hmm, he's crying right now, so I don't know how that's going to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, he probably got smushed by an elemental. Yeah, the drool elemental. Chicken Lone Star? Oh my. One is Don Sorgo. Okay. Chase is drinking very Texan right now. And Musket Lawn this is a 17. The national I always drink that Texan. Texan. Yeah, national. That's true. It says that right there on the can or bottle. So good. But you got to give it to him. Okay. This is you gotta give it to him. That beer, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. It'll get you where and you want to go. Officially established. In All right. Uh, when Frask. Nation. Did you draw? Yeah. Uh, Frask has no interest in these. These are these look relatively Frask modern. Frask, draw a card. Everyone else drew a card. If no, everyone else, te no. if everyone no. tells no. Frask to yeah. draw it, I, even so, Frask is very wary of the no. items from this temple. You yeah, should absolutely. be. <laughs> Frass, Frass, yeah, we um, all made a mistake. I don't, I don't want to make you do anything, but, I mean, you can roll an opposing check here, but Blake is going to, like, look longingly into your eyes, grab your hand, and be like, there's your card, bud. No fucking. I mean, if you would like to oppose it, you are absolutely willing to, but I want John to spend as much postage on this as possible <laughs> <laughs> i think this is really cool and if, it was, and if i wasn't playing a druid who has like the utmost understanding and respect for this temple and fear from the majority of it especially half of it like kill two elementals this is like as far as he knows that is a like the most evil collection of cards in existence and the codex is the good thing or it could be that they're both mixed bags and they're just they're just dangerous as all hell. So Frask is probably afraid of them and does not oh, that, go near them. Okay. That's fine. This is really more of a holiday event, I feel like. Well speaking of which, I was really waiting for one of you guys to roll a one so I could say Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I rolled a twenty, could have said it then. That would be a crit hit. Oh, crit miss. Oh, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> but we all rolled well. We'll get it. All right. Um, after the, like, spooky Skyrim, or not Skyrim, uh, Morrowind, threat of, fate, threat of fate is severed message that appears <laughs> when we draw our cards. Um, I guess so, there's nothing else to be done here? Uh, well, after you uh, draw your cards, um, a a door appears here. I will draw it. Hold on. I want to see these graphics. Did at least one of us draw a card with a beneficial effect? Ooh, good question. Um, Can you tell us what our cards were? I will tell you that I think you guys figured out like two-thirds of the dungeon. Two-thirds, all right. Yeah, I think if we would have taken the diorama out the with us, we could have like, transported like, the Hellspawn anywhere. I feel like the I mean, fish, or maybe the room with the uh, our story and, being yeah, really nothing in either of the rooms. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not anything you didn't explore. You hit all the. You hit all the triggers and all the encounters. I just I think there's two, get two the to be put together. Of it. Yeah. Um, anyhow, a door appears. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I, I really want uh, Frass to at least draw a card. If not, Blake will inadvertently draw a card as a lizard folk. Blake cannot draw a card. As a lizard folk. Ooh. Your character. Can I can is... I take the form of Frass and draw you can. a card? You can. And you'll probably give me like some negative effect. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, I will. So that <laughs> I can give it to Fraskin and Birdly, so you can mail it to him. Does that work? No. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but you're going to get the negative effect. Anyways. I will so enjoy you, you whatever all... happens to all of you. Frask. Vicariously. You see something very weird happen. Blaine turns into in... a giant Gila monster, which you've seen. Yep. I'm a monitor lizard. But he turns into you. And then I turn to you. Oh. Turns into you. Not, not a Gila oh, monster. Oh, the Gila monster is his normal one. Right. I went, right. I went the Gila monster, monster is... then. Then Frask, yeah. And then he turns okay. into Frask, like like you. And he That's is right. all of a sudden just you. Yeah, I'm going to regret uh, that. And he tries to draw a card, and he's not right. allowed Frask's to. going to try to tackle him before he Fuck. does. Okay, he's going to turn back to Blaine or Blake. Or <laughs> Frask is not intelligent, but <laughs> Frask is afraid of these deities. So Frask sees you doing this and is terrified. They'll think it's me. And he <laughs> leaps and just That's like the whole tries to... there's, there's a comedic moment here. Frask absolutely tackles Blake as uh, Blaine uh, as he's uh, as he's drawing the card. Like this, this happens. Uh, it's just like and like, it's like, I, that, I think that, it's like that, I think that Beast be Wars Grok, episode actually. where Dinobot it's the first time fought we've, Dinobot. We've met um. um I'm gonna delete the the yeah. but uh uh so th this this comedy happens um so Frass is the is the one who did not draw a card which is you know wise uh <laughs> or something um but it's be good fun a door does open uh hey we get we could still go raid those tombs if you yeah. want guys Frask literally <laughs> said do not take anything that is not given. And even then, be cautious. I mean, so, mm -hmm. I mean, Helen already took the codex, and then there were some cards there. They gave us the yeah. codex. They were just mad yeah. about our intent. Those cards were clearly totally there. Two for one package. They were just fucking we with us. Frask fears this temple the more than the dragon, pretty, yeah. honestly. All right, well, I'm pretty fucked up, and I'm running right, out of spells. Let's, let's, let's go leave. home yep. and take a nap. <laughs> yep. Only walk through the door. <laughs> okay. I mean, so everybody walk through the door. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So as you walk through the door, you all find yourselves on the deck of a ship. You turn around and see that you've just walked out of a wardrobe. You're looking out the open door of a ship in the middle of a squall. Thunder strikes. And Helen, for a moment, you feel in the distance in the brief instance, or instant that lightning illuminates the scene, you see sailors grappling with their ropes, you see riggings, you see sails, you see uh, a nighttime storm that is thrashing the ship about, but way off in the distance, you see a storm whose voluminous clouds are lit by unheard lightning and beneath it, a tower. And then it's gone. And that's the end of the session, folks. So Fantastic. where do we actually end up? On a ship. Where is Primus? Not you here. No idea. <laughs> oh, the key Wednesday! No, who's gonna... Hey, oh, you know what? We're, we're still four take care of Wednesday. Wednesday. has gotten separated before. <laughs> we're still four minutes early. Come on, give us, give us four Probably minutes. Probably have a the... rendezvous point. No, uh, I mean, no this is a great cliffhanger. What did we miss in the temple? Yeah, that's a good um, question. There is, there is a pretty big connection that you missed. I will say that. Uh, I mean, and we're it's, not going to revisit like, it. So. It's not like an encounter. It's just... Uh, is this something we could still realize? It is still it's something okay. that you can absolutely realize in hindsight. Well, then, damn it. So it's like a lore thing? Yes. Okay, that's cool. I just Does wanted to make like, sure. Hmm? Does it look like we're in the Teal Reef? We'll get to that next time. <laughs> okay. There wasn't a no. I mean, like, I realized that... <laughs> That there was or, the stars and the abyss. Uh, I don't know, man. I have no right. idea why this temple is connected to a wardrobe. Wait, is the Hellespont in a wardrobe now? Are we in Narnia? No, I mean, the, the real question is, is the Hellespont now in a wardrobe that can travel around? 
on a ship. Is the exit to the hell spot necessarily in the same place as the entrance? Entrance, that's a great question as well. Is there any <laughs> things on the front of the ship? No. Ah, well, <laughs> hell, it's a ship though. Ah, we just confirmed it. All right. <laughs> So, all, right. all right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to thank everybody. Oh, yeah. Anything else, Sean? Uh, I was just saying it's great having you guys. Um, you all solved these puzzles uh, in a fantastic fashion, and I love having you all as players. Thank you. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for watching today. We stream on Mondays from 8 to 11, D&D uh, &D 5e. The episodes are uploaded to Neil Stream's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want to go back and watch sessions zero through seven, they're currently on a playlist. Um, and uh, yeah, we will see you next week. I'm going to go ahead and uh, raid Matt Bragg and uh, everyone go say hello and, uh, you know, give them some raidy welcomes. Have a good one, everybody. Night viewership. We love you. Yep. Oh, chat loves your kitty. Don, uh, I'm a ben. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the star. Rating now. <laughs>